governors, alternate governors, temporary alternate governors, President Asakawa, good morning. My name is Mohammed Ehsan Khan, and I am the Secretary of the Asian Development Bank. Thank you for taking the time to participate in today's business session of the 56th Annual Meeting of the Board of Governors. I confirm that we have a quorum for the meeting. I now request the Chair of Board of Governors, the Governor for the Republic of Korea, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister Chu, to start the business session. Mr. Chair, please. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Good morning, Governors, President Asakawa. Uh, the meeting is called to order. First thing, I forgot the, uh, <laughs> the comment. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Good morning, Governors and the President Asakawa. The meeting is called to order. I would like to welcome all of you to the business session of the 56th Annual Meeting of the Board of Governors of the Asian Development Bank. Let us first take a paragraph two and three of the Procedures Committee report. With regard to the provisional schedule of the business session, document BG 56-2, we will, you will note that the schedule provides that we finish all the items on the agenda today. The provisions relating to the conduct of the meeting as set out in document BG 56-3 are similar to those adopted in previous years. I take it that these two documents are acceptable and that we may approve them as recommended by the Procedures Committee. In paragraph one of its report, the Procedures Committee has recommended the approval of the agenda as shown in document PG 56-1. If there is no objection, I declare that the agenda is approved. Let us now take up the committee's recommendation on the agenda items and start with the agenda items one, two, three, and eight for our notation, which will approved by the Board of Directors. Item one is the ADB annual report for 2022, and item two is the budget for 2023, which encompasses the budget for ADB and ADB Institute, as contained in document PG 56-4. Item three is the status of the financial resources as contained in document BG 56-5. Item eight is the report to the Board of Governors on gender diversity at the ADB Board of Directors as contained in document BG 56-8. As recommended by the Procedures Committee, I propose that the Board take note of these four items accordingly. Turning to item four, financial statements management's report on the internal control of financing, financial reporting and independent auditor's report. And item five, allocation of net income, the committee recommends approval of document BG 56-6 and BG 56-7 respectively. In the absence of any objection, I declare these two items approved and the draft resolution as submitted by the Procedures Committee are adopted. Turning to agenda item six, the committee recommends that the Procedures Committee for 2023 to 2024 be composed of governors of Bhutan Canada, the People's Republic of China, 
France, Georgia, Japan, the Philippines, Singapore, Taipei, China, Tonga, the United Kingdom, and the United States, with the governors for Georgia as chair of the committee. If there is no objection, I declare this recommendation approved. I congratulate the newly appointed members of the Procedures Committee. Finally, on item 7, the committee has recommended that the Governor for Georgia be elected Chair of the Board of Governors for 2023-2024, and the Governors for Philippines and Switzerland be elected Vice Chairs. To hold office from the end of this annual meeting to the end of 57th annual meeting of the Board of Governors, if there is no objection, I declare this recommendation approved. I have great pleasure in congratulating the Governor for Georgia on his election as Chair of Board of Governors for 2023 to 2024. I also congratulate the governors for the Philippines and Switzerland on their election as vice chair for 2023 to 2024. At this point, Allow me to say a few words as Chair of Board of Governors. President Asakawa, distinguished governors, and the ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us. It's my pleasure to be chairing this business session at the first fully in-person annual meeting in four years. ADB has been at the forefront of supporting its members recover from the pandemic while also focusing on poverty reduction, climate response, and other long-term issues. ADB is also working to increase its lending capacity and co-financing with its partners. At the same time, ADB is undertaking an organizational reform centered on efficiency and flexibility. I hope the reform is successful and turn ADB into a climate bank and a solution bank of Asia. Distinguished governors, to adapt well to the changing environment and meet the needs of DMCs, ADB should review its overall work process and make necessary change. In this regard, reform a key word from this year's theme is important not only to the members but also to the ADB itself. I want to take this opportunity to ask ADB to move away from traditional work practice of the past and adopt more flexible and creative approaches going forward. Under the new administration, Korea has worked to become a responsible member of the international community in support of universal values like the SDGs, human rights, freedom, and peace. And in this context, Korea plans to expand its ODA volume to the 10th largest in the world, even under the fiscal stance for consolidation. We will continue to share our experience and knowledge on areas of our expertise, such as digital transition, green, and health. Yesterday, the Korean government announced the decision to contribute $100 million over the next six years to Korea's single donor trust fund, which is the only ICT-related fund in ADB. In addition, Korea was the first of the potential donors to announce its commitment to join the IFCAP facility, which will be launched 
at this annual meeting. We will utilize this innovative financing mechanism to meet the climate-related needs in Asia and the Pacific. Furthermore, Korea and the ADB has agreed to establish K-Hub, which we will make into will make into a hub for climate cooperation to support ADB's goal of becoming a climate bank. Distinguished governors, I look forward to your honest comments and ideas on the future of ADB and the partnership among its members during today's meeting. Thank you so much for your attention. We will now proceed with the management's report to the Board of Governors. I'd like to call on the President of Asian Development Bank to deliver the report. President Asakawa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, members of the Board of Governors, good morning. Uh, welcome to this uh, business session of ADB's annual meeting. I uh, thank the Chair of our Board of Governors, His Excellency uh, Kim Ho Chu, and I thank uh, the Government of the uh, Republic of Korea uh, for hosting uh, these meetings. When we met in September last year, I said that we were preparing carefully to support developing member countries through new uncertainties on their path to recovery. It is vital that we meet the new challenges that have confronted Asia and the Pacific. Food and energy prices have declined uh, from their peak. However, uh, there remains a risk of an escalation from the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which could cause a renewed surge in commodity prices and stoke global inflation and further monetary tightening. Higher debt and interest rates have also magnified uh, the risks to financial stability. This can be seen in the banking sector issues experienced recently in the US and the Europe. To better support our DMCs, ADB is actively evolving our mission, increasing our resources, and undertaking organizational reforms. We are especially committed to invest investing in global and regional public goods to help mitigate the increasing global threats. Let me summarize how our performance in 2022 reflected these efforts. In 2022, ADB committed $20.5 billion in loans, grants, equity investments, guarantees, and technical assistance. Our overall commitments were lower than in 2021, while we focused on improving project readiness and quality. As a result, ADB expects higher commitment in 2023 this year. Once again in 2022, last year, we saw ADB's highest ever climate finance uh, commitments reaching $6.7 billion. Our commitments for food security investments were $3.7 billion, more than double compared to 2021. ADB's private sector operations department committed $3.9 billion, with a continued increase in non-sovereign co-financing amounting to $7 billion. Gender mainstreaming in ADB operations reached its highest level, with 97% of our committed operations supporting gender equality. Asian Development Fund, ADF, commitments reached $938 million in 2022, nearly triple the commitment in 2021. ADB also designed and raised funds for the Innovative Finance Facility for Climate in Asia and the Pacific, IFCAP in short, which will mobilize unprecedented new levels of climate finance through guarantees and grants. Let me turn now to the work that lies ahead. ADB is preparing carefully to address new challenges. The midterm review of Strategy 2030 will address the MDB evolution agenda. 
This will enable ADB to invest in global public goods. Allow me to stress three important operational directions. First, ADB will increase lending resources and enhance private capital mobilization to support DMCs facing various uh, crises. The ongoing review of our capital adequacy framework, CAF, will prepare us to optimize our balance sheet and potentially boost our lending capacity. Through high quality policy based lending and other modalities, ADB will provide counter cyclical support and emergency assistance. This will help DMCs manage crisis and undertake reforms that build resilience, for example, through improved domestic resource mobilization. Under ADB's new operating model, our private sector development shift will promote market-based development. We will catalyze even more private capital through deeper coordination between our sovereign and non-sovereign operations. Second, as a climate bank for Asia and the Pacific, ADB will provide innovative finance, knowledge, and partnerships. ADB is launching IFCAP at this annual meeting. ADB is developing a climate change action plan uh, to transform our operations in support of the climate goals of our DMCs. And ADB is piloting uh, the energy transition mechanism, uh, ETM, uh, to retire or repurpose coal and other fossil fuel power assets. ADB will also continue to promote regional cooperation and integration, which are critical uh, for investing in global public goods, such as climate change mitigation and adaptation. Third, ADB will continue to prioritize our de developing members and populations most in need. Social protection measures for poor and vulnerable groups and focus on the needs of women and girls are essential. So is the need to build resilient and sustainable food systems. And our lower income conflict affected and small island developing members which face heightened vulnerabilities should not be left behind. So I ask for your support to secure additional concessional resources for ADF 14. Before I conclude, let me emphasize that ADB's strength lies in our ability to evolve to meet new challenges. We will work closely with board working groups, and we, we do appreciate that with the governor's proactive leadership, now one third of our board members are female. Let us continue to build on this progress. Our dedicated staff and the deep trust we have built with our members will ensure a successful transformation in the coming year. So I thank you, the governors, for your continued support on this journey as we work together to achieve a pros prosperous, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable Asia and the Pacific. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, President Asukawa. We will now proceed with the discussion. To start the discussion, let me call on the Secretary to explain the conduct of this part of the meeting. Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to have an orderly and organized uh, and constructive discussion and to give sufficient time for governors to speak, the order of speaking has been established. In this regard, I would like to remind the governors that the provisions relating to the conduct of the meeting, which have just been approved, call on governors to keep their spoken remarks brief within the allotted time of three minutes. For joint remarks, five minutes will be allotted. Please be assured that your full written remarks will be entered in the summary of proceedings of the meeting. To help Governors pace themselves. A system of warning lights 
has been installed on the screens in front of you. We request that governors conclude their remarks as soon as possible when the light turns red. Headphones are provided for simultaneous interpretations. Channels for various languages are flashed on the screen. With the chair's permission, uh, we will take a five minute break after each hour. Thank you. And over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We will now listen to the governor's remarks. Governors from Japan will first, followed by the United States and the People's Republic of China. I now call on the governors for Japan. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Please use your headset as I speak in Japanese. ま、社会の各国総務並びにこれ的な皆様、First is climate change. Japan welcomes the agreement to create IFCAP, which is an innovative financing initiative to promote climate action in the region. Japan is ready to contribute 25 million US dollars to IFCAP grant window and request ADB to accelerate its work to start IFCAP. Especially in middle income countries, it is essential to facilitate well functioning capital markets to mobilize private capital. Japan expects ADB to generate and disseminate new knowledge. Second is the issue of debt. For low income countries, prompt debt treatment under the common framework is necessary. For vulnerable middle-income countries, all creditors should work together. In this regard, Japan welcomes the launch of a process for Sri Lanka. Japan expects ADB to work with other international organizations to enhance debt transparency, amongst others. The third policy challenge Japan places in Japan is global health. The strengthening of PDR for prevention, preparedness, therefore, and response to a future health crisis and promoting literacy for universal health coverage conducive for PDR are essential for sustainable economic growth. Drawing on the lessons learned from COVID-19, Japan will continue to extend its support through its trust fund. In order to appropriately respond to the challenges I've discussed, it is essential for ADB to reform its organizational structure as well as revise its operational model. In addition, ADB needs to enhance its lending, lending capacity while ensuring appropriate risk management within its limited capital and financial soundness. I hope ADB will continue to play a leading role under the outstanding leadership of President Asakawa to realize prosperity in the entire Asia-Pacific region. I thank you. Thank you, the Governor for Japan. The next floor goes to the United States. Please. Thank you, Chair. I'm pleased to represent the United States of America at the 56th annual meeting of the ADB. Join fellow shareholders in working with the bank to realize our shared vision for Asia and the Pacific. It's been more than a year since Russia launched its illegal war against Ukraine, and the negative spillovers continue to pervade the global economic landscape. Moreover, we continue to grapple with the aftermath of COVID-19, the worsening impacts of climate change, and the consequences of fragility and conflict. Many of these challenges are global and cross borders, disproportionately affecting the poorest and most vulnerable and threaten to roll back past development gains. We welcome ADB's intention to better address these global challenges. We look forward to partnering with shareholders and management on reforms to the bank's incentive structure, operational approach, and financial capacity. We appreciate ADB's initial impl implementation of the G20 MDB Capital Adequacy Framework recommendations, and we look forward to medium-term work in this area, including incorporating a prudent share of callable capital into the Capital Adequacy Framework. 
For this additional capacity to be deployed sustainably, we call on the bank to adopt a comprehensive annual process on measures that impact income and capital and to integrate its existing ability to adjust the fixed spread on outstanding sovereign loans into its annual process and the capital adequacy framework. We commend the ADB for developing innovative mechanisms to respond to the climate crisis. Alignment with the goals of the Paris Agreement is a cornerstone ADB commitment. We, once achieved, we encourage the bank to take stock on the approach and its implementation. ADB should also further mainstream climate across all sovereign and non-sovereign operations and support policy, legal, and regulatory reforms to bolster resilience and adaptation and mobilize greater private climate finance and investment. We look forward to ADF 14 replenishment negotiations and recognize the critical role the ADF plans, plays in supporting Afghan people. The international community must continue to push for the Taliban edicts that violate the basic human rights of Afghan women and girls to be rescinded. In the meantime, we urge ADB to proceed with additional support for food security and health using a flexible approach that includes meaningful involvement of women in the delivery and receipt of that support. In its safeguard policy review, we urge ADB to build on best practices at other MDBs, incorporate lessons learned from its own experience, and expand protections to address climate change and disadvantaged and vulnerable groups. We welcome the ADB's response on the food security crisis, applaud the focus of the bank's ambition for food security, and urge the bank to leverage its policy dialogues with developing member countries to lower barriers to trade and sharpen the focus on climate food nexus. The ADB is an important partner in achieving the goals of the G7 Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment, for which increasing private capital mobilization to maximize the impact is a key goal. We welcome progress on gender mainstreaming, and we likewise welcome the third annual review to the Board of Governors on Gender Diversity at the ADB Board of Directors. We urge fellow shareholders to adopt measures in their own appointment processes to help increase gender diversity on the board and call on management to support these, uh, uh, support these efforts where appropriate. Let me conclude by thanking the ADB again for its numerous contributions to securing a prosperous, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable Asia and Pacific. Thanks, the Governor for the United States. Yeah. Now, the floor goes to the, uh, the Governor for the People's Republic of China. Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Board of Governors, Mr. Qing Hao Chou, President Asakawa, Governors, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to meet with you in ancient Korea. And I thank the government of Korea and ADB for organizing the meeting. Since last year, ADB has vigorously supported DMCs in coping with the impacts of COVID and promoting recovery. It approved the new operating, operating model and achieved the remarkable results on all its work. PRC highly appreciates the outstanding leadership of President Asakawa and the dedication and professionalism of all ADB staff. At present, the Asia-Pacific economy has entered a crucial stage for post-pandemic recovery, and is facing multiple challenges in the changing global economy. And I'd like to make four suggestions. The first is to give full play to the role of multilateral platforms to promote economic recovery. ADB should promote policy dialogue and coordination among members, promote trade and investment liberalization and facilitation, ensure the stability and smoothness of industrial supply chains, help DMCs strengthen their anti-risk capabilities in areas of public health, Food security and natural disasters, and enhance development resilience, facilitate cooperation in new areas such as digital economy, and explore new endogenous drivers of regional growth. Second, deepen regional cooperation and promote integrated regional development. ADB will support the construction of traditional infrastructure and accelerate the development of new infrastructure, such as industrial infrastructure and internet of things. 
互联互通项目，支持高质量实施 RCEP， 促进中亚区域大美综合、次区域经济合作机制。与“一带一路”倡议有效对接，平衡发展合力。第三，加强与中高收入成员合作，提供更多区域共同产品，顺应亚太地区发展大势和优势特点。适应对现行比业政策进行审议，深化与中高收入成员在应对气候变化、绿色转型等领域合作，加强发展中成员经验分享，提供更多区域公共产品。第四，推进改革创新，更好履行宗旨使命，实施好机构改革方案。ADB 提高机构效率和服务客户的能力，完善资本重组框架，积极探讨包括增资在内的各种方式，增强银行财务可持续性和贷款能力，进一步加大对发展中成员知识、技术和能力建设的支持力度。各位理事、同事们，中国将奋力推进中国制现代化，努力实现。高质量发展，在这一进程中，我们将实施更大范围、更宽领域、更深层次的对外开放，为世界和亚太繁荣与安全注入强大的动力和正能量。我们愿紧密携手各方，朝向构建亚太命运共同体，扎实迈进谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。Next would be the governor for India. Thank you, Chair. Heads of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure to be in person amongst you. The theme of the annual meeting, Rebounding Asia and Recover, Reconnect and Reform, resonates well with the spirit and theme of India's G20 presidency. One Earth, One Family, One Future. Both themes signal the need for unity of purpose and collective action to achieve our shared goals and responsibilities. We are passing through an age of resets, of fuel, food, fertilizer, debt, energy, supply chain, sustainability, fiscal stability, etc. We need a robust ADB that adopts a transformational rather than incremental approach for sustainable and resilient regional development. The Indian economy is in a relatively stronger trajectory in spite of the prevailing economic uncertainties. Our emphasis on proactive policies and empowerment-led development made it possible in India. We continue to focus on strategic and integrated infrastructure and infrastructure development driven by unprecedented capital expenditure and building economic and co economic competitiveness while integrating with global value chains. In the post-pandemic world, people's aspiration for sustained development finance across DMCs need ADB's alignment to more resources and operational efficiencies. Therefore, on both sovereign and private sector, renewed engagement is imperative. While continuing to focus on its core agenda of poverty reduction and development of the LICs, ADB should focus on global public goods in their regional dimension. I'm happy that ADB has started exploring the range of instruments available for its evolution, including G20's CAF for MDBs. I look forward to know how uh, ADB will meet its ambition with more concessional climate finance especially to middle-income countries like India, whose economic progress consistent with the pursuit of its net zero goal by 2070 can have a huge positive impact on the region and beyond. I have noted ADB's strong ambition to deliver climate financing. Sorry, I'll, I shall repeat. I look forward to know how ADB will meet its um, ambition with more concessional climate finance, especially to middle-income countries like India, whose economic progress, consistent with the pursuit of its net zero goal by 2070, can have 
a huge positive impact on the region and beyond. I have noted ADB's strong ambition to deliver climate financing to its DMCs and its establishment of the IFCAP. In closing, I take this opportunity to assure India's continued support to ADB and all its members. Thank you. Thanks to the Governor for India. I now call on the Governor for the Australia. Australia thanks the Government of the Republic of Korea for hosting this annual meeting. Australia commends the bank's continued efforts and support it has provided members in responding to the multiple and overlapping crises that have affected us over the last few years. Despite the onset of the pandemic occurring over three years ago, we're still grappling with its health and economic impacts. The post-pandemic recovery has been hampered by other economic pressures we've had to face, which have only been exacerbated by Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine. It remains as critical as ever that the ADB continues to stand by and assist developing members, drawing on its significant expertise and knowledge to deliver country-specific tailored assistance. Concessional financing to support the poorest and most vulnerable countries remains vital. This is particularly important given rising levels of debt and risks of debt distress within our region. Unlocking additional development financing given existing and future needs is vital. We would like to see the ADB develop an ambitious response to the recommendations of the G20's Capital Adequacy Framework Review. We would encourage the ADB to consider the reform discussions taking place at the World Bank and assess whether there are reforms it could implement to strengthen its operations and support for developing members. The pandemic and spillovers from the war in Ukraine continue to highlight the structural vulner vulnerabilities of small island states. These countries in our region have been among the hardest hit by the economic crisis and remain susceptible to multiple shocks. We welcome the bank's role in supporting these states and reiterate the need for flexible and tailored approaches in dealing with these members. We welcome the ADB's ambitious vision on climate change and its increasing role as the region's climate bank. I also encourage the ADB to consider the unique circumstances of Pacific Island countries and the challenges they face in accessing climate finance. It will be important that the ADB lays the right foundations to bridge the gap between its aspirations and performance. And we would encourage the ADB to ensure staffing, resources, knowledge and the analytical and financial resourcing tools are aligned to deliver on this important priority. Australia is committed to supporting enhanced climate action in our region through increased climate finance and part partnerships in the Pacific and Southeast Asia. Australia is on track to meet its commitment to provide $2 billion Australian dollars in climate finance between 2020 and 2025. We are focused on deploying high quality climate finance to meet the needs of our developing country partners. We also note the concerns of Pacific Island countries around the high cost of remittances and at times the lack of transparency around remittance fees. This is another critical issue given the contribution that remittances make to the development of many of these small island states in our region. Finally, I welcome the third report presented to governors on gender diversity at the ADB Board of Directors. It's pleasing the report shows progress being made, but we acknowledge more needs to be done. Thanks to Governor for the Australia. Governors, we will have a five minute break. After break, the alternate governor for Korea, Chang Yong Lee from the Bank of Korea will take the chair. Thank you. Thank you, governors, uh, for returning to your seats. I call on the governor for Indonesia to deliver her remarks. Thank you so much. Honorable Chair, um, President Massa, and fellow governors, alternate as well as ladies and gentlemen. I would like to congratulate the Korean government and the ADB for the excellent arrangement of this 56th ADB annual meeting, and especially to President Asakawa for his excellent leadership in navigating ADB through current global challenges and for another excellent performance 
uh, of the bank. I would like to also extend my appreciation to the ADB to this theme that is uh, recover, reconnect, and reform. This is aligned well with the Indonesia yesterday, uh, last year, T20 presidency of recover together, recover stronger. And uh, this year, Indonesia ASEAN chairmanship theme that is ASEAN matters epicentrum of growth. Despite the weakening global economic prospect in 2023, the economy of Asia and Pacific is projected to grow 4.8%, increasing for 4.2% last year. So this is a good news, a small good news in the world. Indonesia is also showing a strong recovery with the growth rate last year 5.3, and this year we are expecting to be stabilized at 5%, especially supported by the robust domestic demand. But we have to continue to be vigilant because of the elevating global risk and challenges, especially with the tightening liquidity and increasing interest rate and geopolitical fragmentation. We urge ADP to remain responsive in supporting member countries for providing timely responses to emerging and ongoing crises in the region, just like what you did during the pandemic. As the ASEAN chairmanship this year, Indonesia will ensure that our priority agenda, that is uh, ASEAN matters epicentrum of growth, will contribute to the region recovery and long-term prosperity. This is including by strengthening regional health architecture. Last year, the establishment of the fifth and the pandemic uh, preparedness recovery I think this is going to be one that we expect ADB will support. Developing transition finance to support transition energy. This is also very important for many emerging countries and addressing food insecurity, which is one of the biggest issue for many inflation in our region. I would like to seek the ADB support for this endeavor and we believe that these areas are in line with the ADB priority as uh, already outlined by President earlier. Indonesia also welcomed the ADB to become the region's climate bank. Indonesia and ADB have been collaborating to deliver our climate agenda, particularly on energy transition. We launched the Indonesia Energy Transition Mechanism Country pr uh, Platform last year uh, during the G20 as well as UNFCCC meeting. Uh, we also have a blended finance mechanism to mobilize financing for the ETM project. We are targeting to announce the ETM pilot project this year to demonstrate a just and affordable transition with potential to be replicated in other parts of Asia and beyond. Here, I really appreciate ADB very strong support to us. To ensure the enable environment to mobilize private participation in the energy transition in the region, ASEAN recently released the ASEAN Taxonomy for Sustainable Finance or ATSF version 2, which is including <laughs> energy transition as activities eligible for sustainable finance. This will really help a lot of countries who really truly want to transform from the fossil fuel base, including coal, through the renewable. We urge ADB to support ASEAN and its member, as well as uh, Pacific Island, to design an orderly transition and foster sustainable finance implementation. With all this urgent need, Indonesia encourages ADB to continue its reform agenda and increase its lending headroom, including by considering the recommendation from the G20 Independent Review of the MDB's Capital Adequacy Framework, ADB need to uh, view the reform in a broader perspective, which is emphasizing the stronger partnership with the client country beyond borrower-lender relation, allowing program to be designed based on country ownership and effectively responds to global challenges. I would like to underline also specifically the need of small island, especially Pacific Island, as a client of the ADB, which require a specific handling and their vulnerability, not only through the climate change, but other shock. I hope to see this reform, which is being done in the ADB, 
making progress in the coming years, and I believe that ADB, with the partnership with all member nations, would be able to deliver this reform agenda. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, the Governor for Indonesia. I call on the Governor for Canada. Thank you to the Asian Development Bank and the Republic of Korea for organizing the 56th annual meeting of the Board of Governors. This year's annual meeting takes place as the world recovers from COVID-19, <coughs> as the impacts of climate change mount, and as biodiversity loss continues at an alarming rate. At the same time, Russia's illegal Im invasion of Ukraine is compounding economic challenges for the most vulnerable in Asia and the Pacific and around the world. Hard-won development gains are at risk. We applaud the ADB's climate ambition and encourage the bank to accelerate its support of clean, resilient, and nature-positive development. We look forward to a comprehensive climate action plan that sets ADB on a robust path towards meeting its climate finance targets. We call on the bank to align its funding with the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework and Fund to help meet our goal to mobilize $200 million in international biodiversity funding by 2030. We further call on the ADB to engage in the discussions on financing for loss and damage launched at the 2022 2022 United Nations Climate Change Conference. We also welcome ADB's engagement on MDB evolution. Global challenges and national development objectives are intrinsically linked, and it is essential to have an inclusive dialogue among all ADB members on how we can best address these concerns together. We further welcome the bank's positive engagement on the G20 CAF review recommendations to boost lending capacity. Discussions around risk appetite are particularly promising. Many global challenges have disproportionate effects on women, girls, and those in disadvantaged or vulnerable situations, including LGBTQI plus people. We encourage the bank to apply an intersectional approach across its development operations, including through safeguards, so that no one is left behind. We welcome the report to the Board of Governors on Gender Diversity at the Board of Directors. Diversity strengthens decision-making, and Canada supports efforts of the Board Working Group to increase the representation of women. Finally, the bank must bolster its ability to mobilize private capital and support domestic revenue mobilization. Canada will continue to partner with the ADB to leverage, de-risk, and forge enabling environments for private investments. We call on the bank to support making the Global Emerging Markets Risk Database available to a wider audience. Developing countries face real and pressing challenges, and there are high expectations for the bank to develop solutions. Canada is committed to working with member countries to support the ADB so that together we can meet these challenges. Thank you. I thank Governor uh, for Canada. Now I call on the Governor for Germany. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair and the Governor. So I would like to thank the Korean government for its hospitalities. Last year, the Asia-Pacific region was one of the fastest growing regions worldwide, and no doubt that is good news. But rebounding Asia needs to take multiple global crises into consideration. It has been mentioned, Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine, raising geopolitical tensions as well as the social consequences of the pandemic. Low-income groups in particular are hit by high inflation and food prices. Many countries face increases in public indebtedness, and that severely reduces government's capacity to act. Apart from these challenges, the IPCC keeps reminding us that global warming is increasing, environmental disasters are becoming more frequent, causing destruction, human suffering. Women and girls are particularly affected by climate change, but they are also important agents of change. And unless we succeed in finding solutions, each of us and each one of us will have to be a more 
loss and damage. We cannot make it good again, but we can make it much less bad. You, President Master showed in Glasgow that ADB is ready to take up the challenge. But time is working against us because no increase in material well-being can ever be sustainable unless we succeed in tackling climate change and conserve the rich biodiversity. In order to meet its targets, ADB will have to be substantially increased climate commitments. Investments needs to go hand in hand with structural fiscal policy approaches aiming at a fair and just transition. The private sector must play an active role in this regard. This will require good conditions for investment, and here ADB has the regions, as the region's principal bank and climate bank, will have to keep doing its part. At the recent spring meetings, we agreed that protecting global public goods will play an increasingly vital role in the future and needs to be reflected in the World Bank's mission and vision. And as you know, we advocated for climate action, preserving biodiversity and pandemic prevention to be more firmly anchored in the operational model of the World Bank and clearly that dealing with climate global challenges will respectively affect efforts by all MDBs. We encourage though ADB to actively engage in these discussions with its sister institutions. Apart from recover, reconnect and reform, resilience is of paramount importance focusing on proactive preventive support instead of costly ad hoc crisis response is more sustainable and it's the more efficient approach. ADB can help to draw the right political conclusions from past crises. In this context, I would like also to encourage ADB to place greater emphasis on the issue of gender equality. This will not only help to make societies more just, but it will also strengthen their stability economic success and resilience. In these challenging times, it's all the more important for the bank to preserve its capital and use it in a way that delivers the biggest development impact. Maintaining the triple ray rating continues to be our business model. I am pleased that ADB has presented constructive proposals in response to the recommendations of the G20 panels of experts. Going forward, it will be essential to strike the right balance between the following issues and concerns. First, the task of coping with the ongoing impacts of crisis and risks. Second, the need to tackle cross-border global challenges. And third, the necessity of ensuring the ad that ADB's business model continues to be robust enough, even in these difficult and uncertain times. Let me close by underlining that the theme of our annual meeting quite highly sends the right signal of hope and seeking to overcome the global challenges, we can build on this endless creativity and the stunning performance that I see in many places when I look around the region. It is up to us in the ADB to fully use this potential. Thank you very much. Thank you, the Governor, uh, for joining. Let me call on the Governor for uh, Malaysia. Mr. Asakawa, ladies and gentlemen. Malaysia's economy has recorded an encouraging performance with the gross domestic product growth for 2022 was recorded at 8.7% compared to only 3.1% achieved in 2021. However, for 2023, the country's GDP growth is expected to moderate to 4.5% in line with the latest global economic outlook by the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. We sincerely believe by working together with ADB and other institutions with the same goals, we will overcome the predicament. Alongside the new stable and inclusive Unity Malaysia government with a two-third majority in parliament, Malaysia is poised to achieve greater economic heights in the coming years. Malaysia's Prime Minister, Anwar Ibrahim, has pledged to create a Malaysia that is for all Malaysians on 19 January 2023, he introduced the Malaysia Madani concept. Malaysia Madani lays out vision of a civilized, skilled and inclusive society based on six core values, namely sustainability, prosperity, innovation, respect, trust and compassion. Malaysia welcomes the theme for this year's ADB 56 annual meeting, which is Rebounding Asia, Recover, Reconnect and Reform. 
The theme reflects the spirit of getting up after falling and striving to be stronger and greater. As Confucius once said, our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Let us all rise to an even greater economic achievement in the years to come. I would like to honor ADB for combating climate change. ADB is providing various financing, such as innovative finance facility for climate in Asia and Pacific, IFCAP, and energy transition mechanism. The rising cost of living due to elevated food prices had become the main concern for the population in many developing member countries, DMCs. As such, Malaysia welcomes ADB's allocation of USD 14 billion for the Fund for Food Security to ensure food supplies in this region. We all had just recently experienced the global pandemic, which highlighted the importance of digitalization in the economy. In this regard, Malaysia appreciates ADB's role in improving digital infrastructure and education level among the MCs through various technical assistance and loans to meet the needs of member countries. We also take note ADB's effort in gender equality across Asia and the Pacific through promoting gender equality and women empowerment, which were able to reduce poverty and contribute to green, equitable, and inclusive development. Last but not least, I would like to congratulate ADB on the success of ADB 56 annual meeting held in this beautiful city of Incheon. Terima kasih, Kamsa Hamida. Thank you. Thank you, the Governor uh, for Malaysia. Uh, let me call on the Governor for Philippines. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Let me start by expressing our appreciation to the ADB and the Republic of Korea for hosting this meeting. By the way, I walked around uh, a lot in the city since I arrived, and I'm very impressed by Incheon's parks and buffers between the noisy highways and vehicular noise. And I would like to thank the officials of Incheon and its people for its hospitality. The theme, Rebounding Asia, Recover, Reconnect, and Reform, is the best way to summarize what the Asian economies must do in the coming years. Recent forecasts of various international and multilateral institutions, including the ADB, highlight the strong recovery of developing Asian economies. The Philippines, for instance, grew by 7.6% last year. We expect its GDP to grow by 6 to 7% this year, and by 6.5 6 to 8% in 2024 and 2023. With regards to inflation, the latest outturns are still high, but we are quite confident that inflation will although it remains elevated, will revert towards the midpoint of our target by next year. Nevertheless, the risk to inflation, especially because of possible global uh, shocks and tensions, and uh, maybe even the El Nino, continue to lean towards the upside for 2023 and 2024, and therefore going forward, the central bank remains vigilant against inflation risk over the policy horizon. In line with the Philippine Development Plan, the strategy of the Philippine government will focus on modernizing agriculture, expanding agribusiness, encouraging private sector participation in infrastructure development, promoting digital transformation, and enhancing the competitiveness of local industries, among others. We acknowledge that the ADB has been relentless in its efforts to alleviate poverty and social inequality, tackle climate change, enhance resilience and sustainability, and foster growth across the Asia-Pacific region. For that, we thank the ADB for its continued support to the Philippines. In particular, the ADB has been a strong partner in the pursuit of Philippines' development agenda. Recently, ADB held consultation with, with our national government to present the bank's proposed themes for new country partnerships, focusing on intensifying climate action, which the Philippines needs because we plan to, we will no longer build new power plants. And in this regard, ADB's uh, energy transmission me uh, transition mechanism is very important. Second is investing in climate, smart transportation, and digital transformation. 
And third, of course, is investing in Filipinos. These clearly are well within and quite consistent with ADB's uh, policies and agenda. With the contributions, while well, the contributions of the ADB provide tremendous financing support for our parts, imperative that strong fiscal consolidation strategies be undertaken. This uh, fiscal consolidation strategy will bring down our debt to GDP ratio from the current 63.5% to less than 60% by 2025 and cut the deficit to GDP ratio from the current 6.4% to 3% by 2028. At the same time, the government will build better more as it remains committed to the goal of ramping up its spending on public infrastructure and completing on schedule, especially ADB funded projects, ongoing projects in all parts of the country within the next six years. With target infrastructure disbursements carefully recalibrated in consideration of the available fiscal space, government spending in the sector is expected to reach pre-pandemic levels in, by, by, by the end of the term of the current president. Coupled with the tighter fiscal program, this will signal sustainable economic growth in the medium term. Multilateral cooperation and concessional funding assistance given to developing member countries will remain to be the most effective tools in ensuring a sustainable and inclusive recovery. And we commend the ADB's effort in exploring initiatives that will increase its lending capacity. Climate action and navigating policy issues surrounding it require a whole of society approach. The ADB needs to find ways to seamlessly restructure financing in such a way that will be a greater enabler for greener and more resilient growth for its member countries. As we continue to see developments in this dynamic region, we will see that member countries will have evolving needs. Let's continue to work together in envisioning a robust path of development, ushering improved social and economic well-being for our people. Thank you very much. I thank the governor for Philippines. Uh, let me call on the governor for France. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On behalf of France, I would like first to extend my gratitude to the Republic of Korea for hosting this annual meeting, the excellent organization, and the warm hospitality. Uh, this is indeed a key moment for ADB in a very complex uh, context, as the bank is expected to continue delivering on an ambitious response uh, to the Asia-Pacific's region needs in a difficult macroeconomic context stemming from the impact of the Russian aggression of Ukraine, but also from the immediate effect of climate change. And the ADB has to do it while transforming itself into the climate bank of the region, contributing to the evolving MDB's agenda, undertaking the midterm review of both Strategy 2030 and the ADF, and launching its new operating model. So we commend ADB for being engaged in these multiple, multiple reform streams, but call, of course, on its vigilance as ambition comes with high implementation risks. France is, of course, support, committed to support the bank's transformation, and three areas are of particular importance for us. First, climate change. Um, we, of course, support reaching the very ambitious target that has set itself to reach the cumulative $100 billion by 2030, but we know it's a challenge. So we positively note the increase in climate finance numbers in 2022 and commend ADB's engagement in numerous innovative activities, such as the ETM or the JetP. But more needs to be done and in a more systematic and transformative way to keep in line with the Paris Agreement objectives. The ADB also has a central role to play in protecting biodiversity and preserving key ecosystems. Second, balance sheet optimization. Mobilizing additional financing with existing resources will be key to address energy transition and development needs. It is therefore of the utmost importance that ADB succeeds in creating more headroom. France applauds ADB's engagement in this issue but we expect the bank to rapidly present ambitious proposals that will provide additional leverage towards increasing the bank's operation. Third, the new operating model is a key tool to deliver on these priorities. In particular, it is crucial that the ADB mainstreams climate across the institution and that climate becomes a core skill for each staff. Finally, France is calling for having a strategic discussion on governance of the bank and on business processes. 
To fully support Asia's sustainable recovery, ADB should continue in a systematic way to pay special attention to debt sustainability in its interventions, further mobilize private co-financing, and also continue supporting and mainstreaming gender equality. And uh, on this point, we welcome the report on gender diversity at the board level. Thank you very much. I thank the governor for France. Uh, let me call on the governor uh, for Pakistan. Bismillah rahman rahim Honorable Chair, distinguished governors, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to address this session of the 56th Annual Meeting of Asian Development Bank. I bring with me warm greetings and best wishes of the people and the government of Pakistan. The theme of this year's annual meeting, Rebounding Asia, Recover, Reconnect and Reform, comes at the right time when Asia and the Pacific is facing the challenge to recover from the adverse impacts of the pandemic, climate change, Ukraine war, commodity price shocks and slow global growth. Ladies and gentlemen, Pakistan is no exception to these challenges. While the economy is still trying to recover from last year's devastating floods, rising inflation and commodity shortfalls are posing serious challenges to national food security and economic stability. These have affected the development spendings and our efforts towards achieving the sustainable development goals. Therefore, I believe that this meeting provides a unique opportunity for us to discuss and address these challenges collectively. The Asian Development Bank has a pivotal role to play in supporting the region's sustained and sustainable recovery by providing technical assistance, financial resources and policy support to its member countries. Ladies and gentlemen, despite these challenges, Pakistan has shown remarkable resilience and determination to overcome them. Pakistan's national response to counter the COVID-19 pandemic was one of the highly successful and appreciated globally. Pakistan suffered the worst floods of its history last year. These floods remind us all to give primacy to act on issues related to climate change and to work together with countries that suffered the worst consequences of global phenomena without being its major contributors. We are thankful to the international development partners for extending tremendous support in the context of flood reconstruction in the Geneva Conference held earlier this year. We recognize that we cannot overcome our challenges alone. The need for collective action and cooperation has never been more evident than today. Therefore, Pakistan fully supports EDB's efforts to promote regional cooperation and integration, which are critical to achieving sustainable recovery in Asia and the Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to urge the Asian Development Bank to support Pakistan in developing climate resilient infrastructure and also address the issues of food and security. We welcome the bank's initiative to get closer to its developing member countries through introduction of a new operating model. It would result in better understanding of their distinct needs and providing effective client-centric solutions. We welcome initiatives towards improving ADB's lending capacity to better position itself in supporting the region. We also welcome the ongoing review of the capital adequacy framework with great optimism, which when completed would significantly augment the bank's institutional and financial capability. Ultimately, DMCs would like to see a financially strong ADB that is effective and responsive to the ever-changing and growing needs of its members. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, Pakistan believes that the challenges we face today require urgent and collective action. We need to recover from the impacts of the pandemic, reconnect our economies and societies, and reform our systems to build back better. Pakistan is committed to working with ADB and its member countries to achieve these goals. We believe that by working together, we can overcome these challenges and build a more resilient, sustainable, and prosperous future for our region. Let me reaffirm Pakistan's commitment to building a more resilient, sustainable, and inclusive future for our people and for the entire region. We look forward to working with all of you to achieve this shared vision. Thank you. I thank the governor for Pakistan. Uh, let me call on the governor for the United Kingdom. Thank you, 
Chair, Excellencies and colleagues, let me also thank the Government of Korea for the very generous and very inspiring hosting. Thank you. I want to also thank the staff of the Asian Bank for all their dedicated work this year. The bank has done an outstanding job in supporting its clients through the crises of the past year, including the impact of Russia's aggressive war on Ukraine. But even as some countries in the region rebound, now is not the time to settle. Many countries are not able to withstand the challenges of climate change, and many poor and vulnerable people in the region, so badly affected by three years of crisis, and others by conflict, are not and will not be able to seize the opportunities of green growth. The UK therefore remains ambitious for the future size, the approach, and the impact of the bank. And the bank must stay focused on both climate and development. They are two sides of the same coin. I'd like to make um, four points. First, on scale. Like others, we strongly welcome the innovations the bank has already shown in mobilizing finance. The bank is in many ways ahead of its MDB peers. We particularly welcome the way the bank has reinsured its private sector portfolio to free up money something others could usefully copy. And we applaud the innovative design of IFCAP, and we look forward to supporting IFCAP with a guarantee. The response to the G20 capital adequacy review is already strong, but we do challenge the bank to go even further, including by recognizing a portion of callable capital. We also urge faster decisions, particularly the decision on the charter reform, if possible. And we also wonder if there is a path through which the bank could be ready to showcase the new financial ambition even earlier, perhaps at the SDG summit or the G20 summits in September, for example. Second, as well as scale on being ready for future crises and shocks, as well as a larger bank, we need a more shock responsive bank. We commend the bank on its innovative suite of counter-cyclical facilities and disaster risk instruments and its work on shock responsive social protection. But we do urge the bank to do even more to expand and use its toolkit for preparing and responding to shocks. We also call on the bank to consider piloting climate resilient debt clauses that allow countries to pause repayments when a crisis hits. Third, on climate, uh, like others, we look forward to the action plan. The commitment to provide 100 billion of climate finance to 2030 will require a significant scale up of activity. We welcome the bank's leadership in supporting the just energy transition partnerships in Vietnam and Indonesia. And we now urge the bank to set a sub target on adaptation financing um, of at least 40%. The bank is good at adaptation investments. We've been very impressed by the way the portfolio has been built this year, including in the Pacific. We also urge the bank to lead the way in making it easier for countries to access climate finance, moving where sensible to programmatic support to support ambitious climate transitions, and also playing their part in driving wider donor coordination. The new operating model will be key to delivery on climate ambition, and we look forward to regular engagement with the board on progress. Fourth and finally, on the ADF, we also look forward to the review of the future of the Asian Development Fund um, grants and concessional lending. The fund must retain its focus on the poorest and most vulnerable countries, but the future vision for the ADF must be set within a long-term vision for the whole Asia Bank Group. And so we urge the bank to be imaginative in thinking about the future size of the ADF in the context of the income that can be generated from the ADB balance sheet. Thank you. Thank you, the Governor for the United Kingdom. Let me call on the Governor for Italy. Thank you, Chair. Let me start by thanking the Korean government and the people of Incheon for their hospitality and excellent organization of these annual meetings. In the last three years, ADB has acted quickly to support the immediate needs of its DMCs. 
We believe that the focus should now return on long-term development goals, while at the same time further integrating global challenges into the bank's core operational agenda. On priorities, first, we support the ambition of President Asakawa to make ADB the solution provider and the climate bank of the region. The $100 billion target will, however, be difficult to reach without a significant scaling up of climate action. Second, as co-chair with Indonesia of the G20 Joint Finance Health Task Force, committed to adding value to the work on pandemic prevention, preparedness and response, Italy supports ADB's work across developing Asia to finance improved healthcare provision for poverty reduction and improved human capital. Third, Italy also shares the priority of making food systems more resilient in the long term. We therefore support ADB's recent effort to improve food security, investing in new technologies and improving market access for small farmers. Looking at the financial side, we welcome the start of a collective reflection on these and other global themes in the form of a midterm review of Strategy 2030 and in the context of the future ADF replenishment. The starting point of discussions on the role of concessional assistance is that resources are scarce and in high demand. Therefore, they must be used judiciously and directed to low-income countries with limited access to markets. An ambitious implementation of all the capital adequacy framework recommendations will allow to increase lending using available resources. We are proud of the fact that the CAF review was launched under the Italian presidency of the G20, and we consider this a great collective achievement. We appreciate ADB's full support throughout the whole exercise. We need to work collectively to leverage existing resources more. This includes making better use of existing and new facilities and further mobilizing private capital. Let me conclude with an announcement. The Italian government wishes to express its interest in hosting the 2025 annual meetings of the Board of Governors. We look forward to working closely with ADB to deliver a successful annual meeting and to welcoming you all in Italy in 2025. Thank you. I thank the governor for Italy. Now let me call on the governor for New Zealand. Uh, Tina Koto, Honourable Governors and President Azakawa. First let me join colleagues in expressing our gratitude to the government and people of the Republic of Korea for their excellent organisation of the event and warm hospitality. Facing a broad array of challenges, recovery from COVID, climate change, Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, to name just three, requires us to do things differently. We must test and perhaps reset our assumptions about the world we operate in, find new ways of solving problems and challenge ourselves to redefine our roles, how we work and our appetite for risk. President Azakawa, we welcome your strong engagement in global discussions on MDB evolution. We are pleased that this annual meeting will focus on the greater capacity the bank needs to tackle the climate crisis and support its most vulnerable members with sufficient concessional resources. We welcome the more holistic approach that ADB is taking. In the year ahead, we expect that the capital adequacy review climate change action plans, ADF 14 replenishment proposals, and the budget impacts of the new operating model will be more integrated and linked to a clear vision for ADB's future. We are concerned that ADF 13 resources will not be sufficient to deliver the development impact that donors anticipated, particularly in the Pacific. In this context, it is more important than ever that ADB accelerate implementation of the 2017 procurement policy reforms that improve value for money, promote greater competition in Pacific infrastructure procurement, and maximise local participation in projects. We also recognise the dire economic and humanitarian situation in Afghanistan. We strongly support ADB continuing to deliver for the Afghan people but we must be realistic about what the ADB can achieve in light of the deliberate choices the Taliban authorities are making with respect to the lives and rights of Afghan women and girls. 
We are broadly supportive of the directions for the ADF 14 replenishment. There is no question that ADF continues to be needed. It is more relevant than ever. We must look at whether the level of resources and the framework for allocating resources are adequate. I mentioned earlier that we need to redefine our roles and ways of working. ADB's new operating model is intended to do just that. However, we were disappointed that the organisational review was silent on how the role and functions of the Board of Directors are exercised and whether any changes to the Board's way of working might be needed. We would like governors to also focus on this issue in the context of discussions on MDB evolution. Finally, New Zealand strongly welcomes the third report on gender diversity on the Board of Directors. We especially recognise the historic achievement of reaching equal representation at the alternate director level. We encourage governors to consider the insights offered by the three reports to date and how we can collectively continue to make progress on increasing gender diversity at the executive director level. Thank you, Chair. I thank the governor for New Zealand. Uh, let me call on the governor for Thailand. Thank you, Chair. Thailand fully support the theme of this year's annual meeting, which is the Rebounding Asia Recover, Reconnect and Reform, which is the very timely and shall have the way for resilience and sustainable growth of the region. Over the past years, the world has faced multiple challenges, in particular the pandemic, which affected economic activities and connectivity across the world. Fortunately, the worst of the pandemic seems to be fully behind us, as we would be able to meet here for the face-to-face -face annual meeting. Thanks to the ADB's targeted intervention to support developing member countries from the onset of the pandemic, nevertheless, geopolitical tensions and volatility in the global financial market still threaten to detail derail our recovery. In light of this, our cooperation remains essential if we are to walk through the path of recovery together. I just want to touch upon three important points. First, connectivity is the key factor for regional rebounding, especially the infrastructure linkages. While we have reconnected physically, digital connectivity is no less important. Indeed, in one of the seminar taking place this week. The role of cloud computing is in reconnecting Asia and driving economic and social recovery will be discussed. I hope to see more of such connectivity among our member countries, both in physical infrastructure and digital infrastructure, as means to improve efficiency in economic and social activity. Second, Strong rebounding also relies on appropriate economic structure. Over the years, the ADB has played an important role in, support, in supporting countries in implementing institutional reform to make our economy more transparent, more environment-friendly, and more inclusive. Still, it is up to each member country's government to carry out its own re internal reform, taking into consideration physical transparency environmental sustainability, inclusivity, and the well-being of the people. Third, having just mentioned inclusivity, financial assistance should be given to, the, to, um, uh, to the improving the productivity and quality of agricultural products and food security, which in turn will benefit the vulnerable groups, especially those in the agricultural sector who bear the brunt of climate change. And may I also suggest that the ADB would consider Thailand's uh, bio-circular green model, or BCG, as a pathway towards sustainable and inclusive growth in the region. In closing, Thailand looks forward to deepening and our uh, partnership with the ADB and all members to accelerate economic development and bring more prosperity to our region. Thank you. I thank the governor for Thailand. Let me call on the uh, governor for Taipei, China. Mr. Chairman of the Board of Governors, Mr. President, Honorable Governors, distinguished guests, 
I would like to extend my great gratitude to the Ministry of Economy and Finance of Korea and the ADB for sparing no efforts with their hospitality in the preparation of this important event. The 56th annual meeting is the first fully in-person annual meeting since 2019, showing the great achievement of global and regional cooperation in post-pandemic recovery. However, the recovery is faced very various challenges, including inflation, supply chain disruption, food insecurity and long-term issues that need our immediate attention and action. The Asia-Pacific is one of the most vulnerable regions to climate change. We have met an ambitious net zero commitment and are striving to find the new models of a low carbon economy. We welcome the ADB's vision determination at the concrete steps on climate change. But we also call for stronger actions to build climate resilience for the most environmentally vulnerable DMCs and such as SIDs. I would like to highlight the importance of strengthening domestic resource mobilization among the DMCs to fundamentally improve their capacity for tax and other revenue collection, with the aim to assist the DMCs to broaden their source of revenue, we, con we concrete more study and research to be conducted into unleashing their potential of natural resources, such as promoting the blue econ economy or blue carbon related initiative, which may not only benefit the M's local economies, but also be helpful for the regional and the global decarbonization. Another point I would like to bring your attention is gender equality. No economy can reach its full potential where women not, do not have equal opportunities. While we welcome the ADB's efforts to advance gender equality in the region by committing to gender inclusive projects in at least 75% of its operation by 2030, we also expect ADB to focus on the promotion of women's participation in diversify the field. It's a fact that we are a founding member of the ADB and has fully carried out its membership obligation and the responsibility and the pursuit of the same global champions by the ADB. Nevertheless, we want to come continuously and strongly express our disagreements over the unilateral alteration in our membership designation. designation. I would like to call on the ADB and all member countries to fully respect each other to ensure fair treatment and the equal opportunities to host and engage in the activities organized by the ADB. To conclude, ADB has played a pivotal role in helping member countries transform their developmental landscape all these years. I assured ADB of our support and which all member countries continues success in development, peace, and the prosperity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I thank the governor for Taipei, China. Uh, fellow governors, I'd like to clarify for the record that ADB recognizes the, me the member only by the name of Taipei, China. Let me uh, call on the governor for the Netherlands. Thank you, Chairman. Um, let me start by uh, expressing my gratitude to the government of the Republic of, Co of Korea, the city of Incheon, and the bank management for hosting this uh, annual meeting. 
Um, this is a moment when we uh, are finally able to come together in person to show our commitment to the bank, our, our appreciation to all the hardworking ADB staff and management. The developing member countries of the bank are facing several challenges. The aftermath of the COVID pandemic, inflationary pressure, and increasing debt rates. The fallout of the Russian invasion in Ukraine threatens food security and the impacts of climate change, just to name a few. These challenges also have impact on the bank. Recently, we've seen a worldwide push for MDB reform in response to these challenges. This push for reforms has to be seen in connection with other calls for change, such as the Bridgetown Initiative, the G20 um, Capital Adequacy Framework Review, and the uh, SDG Stimulus Plan uh, by the UN. In this context, it's vital for the ADB to adapt its business model to the evolving needs of the region taking its unique position within the region as a point of departure. For the coming years, the bank has to focus, as far as we are concerned, on three vital areas. First of all, we need to transform the bank into the region's climate bank. And we thank President Asakaba for expressing this ambition, which we fully support. In this context, um, I'm happy to announce that tomorrow, the bank and the Netherlands will officially launch the Water Resilience Trust Funds to which the uh, Netherlands uh, was, um, was able to uh, contribute. Secondly, an organization that supports countries to be resilient should be resilient itself. The organizational review provides an opportunity to prepare the bank for the decades to come and critically review structures that have, in, have been in place for many years. However, we should, should keep in mind that change is not the goal uh, here, but rather a means to improve an impact that the bank achieves on the ground. Um, import, important themes such as climate should be, um, should be central um, no, guidance on, on, on important themes such as climate change should, should remain crucial within the bank. And furthermore, we uh, think that diversity is also an important element of a resilient uh, organization. And in this context, we support the recommendations of the board working group on gender diversity. Third, Big ambitions require big financial means. And we commend the bank with its recent engagement with the G20 Capital Adequacy Framework Review. But much work still has to be done in this respect. With these three essential changes, we can, we can work together towards a bank that is fit for the future. The Netherlands looks forward for remaining an engaged partner of the bank and of our partner countries in the Asia and Pacific. Thanks. I thank the Governor for Netherlands. I call on the Governor for Bangladesh. Honorable Chair, President ADB, Governors, distinguished delegates, good morning to you all. At the outset, I'd like to extend my honest appreciation to the government of Korea for their warm hospitality and magnificent arrangements. I would also like to convey my gratitude to ADB for organizing this event in the context of COVID pandemic and amidst global geopolitical uncertainties. I find that the theme of this year's meeting is quite ins insightful and persuasive. Honorable Chair, most of the countries are currently undergoing unprecedented food, fuel, fertilizer, and financial crisis due to ongoing geopolitical condition. These are, however, disproportionately affecting the LDCs like us as we stand on the long-term structural problems due to low domestic resource mobilization, dependency on few products for exports, high dependency on imported basic foodstuffs, and devastating impact of climate change. 
we are also injecting, these are also injecting uncertainties and anxiety in our everyday lives. Reserves depletion had compelled us to adopt austerity measures. Many contractors are showing unwillingness to implement projects as the cost of materials and equipment has increased substantially in the international market. Export is apprehended to suffer due to decreased demand. Finally, accelerated inflation is affecting the lives and livelihood of the poor people. I seriously looking forward to have an independent analysis who will finally gain from this crisis. At this depressing scenario, we also observed with great frustration that most of the development partners are increasing their lending rates ex at exponential rate unilaterally. Distinguished presence, at this critical point, my specific proposals to the forum are a smooth supply chain, particularly for food and fuel, must be ensured without any compromise so that the business may run as per internal planning and do not fall apart due to exogenous shocks. Policy-based supports and concessional financing would be instrumental in tackling immediate economic challenges. Climate financing must be concessional. Selection of institutions and disbursement processes should be simpler and need-based. Additional financing and appropriate technologies must be in place for the transition from the fossil fuel-based energy to renewable energy so that it does not impose additional financial burden on us. Incentives must be ensured for green economic transition. Continue existing support to public sector for the development of infrastructure and enhance regional connectivity. Support to skill development to face the upcoming challenges of fourth industrial revolution and the meet the future demand of industries are now utmost priority. Assist us in reforming the domestic resource mobilization mechanism without any compromise, uh, the industrial growth and investment. I firmly believe that ADB's collaboration and partnership will be instrumental for addressing the real challenges and rebounding Asia, which we have witnessed during the pandemic. Together, we can reach the goal. With this hope, I would like to conclude. I thank you all. I thank the governor for Bangladesh. Uh, now I call on the governor for Uzbekistan. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I would like to express our gratitude to the government of the Republic of Korea and the Asian Development Bank for their hospitality and excellent arrangement of the bank's 56th annual meeting. Dear President Asakawa, let me express my appreciation for your continued support to the development of cooperation with Uzbekistan. We appreciate as well as the bank's support to bold and comprehensive reforms program of the President of the Republic of Uzbekistan, His Excellency Shavkat Mirziyoyev. I am pleased to report that Uzbekistan has made significant progress in economic and social development in recent years. We have implemented wide-ranging reforms aimed at improving the business climate, attracting foreign investments, and promoting private sector-led growth. As a result, our economy has grown by an average of 5% over the past five years, and we have seen significant improvements in human development indicators. Uzbekistan is committed to ADB's strategic agenda for 2030, which focuses on eradicating extreme poverty, reducing inequalities, and accelerating progress towards environmental sustainability. ADB is a long-term partner with the largest portfolio in Uzbekistan. Since 1996, the bank's portfolio remains impressive with over 10 billion US dollars across 80 projects. ADB is our trusted partner that provides not only financing, but also advises us on various reform areas through the policy dialogue, which is tailored to Uzbekistan's needs and conditions. We value the ADB's commitment and determination to deliver strong results in our country. Dear participants of the annual meeting, Uzbekistan adopted a new five-year development strategy, which is based on the following pillars. Strengthening the role of civil society, ensuring the rule of law, sustainable and equitable economic growth, social policy, acting as a responsible member of the global community, community conducting open and pragmatic foreign policy. We're aligning our national development plans with the SDGs, and we have identified priority areas where ADB support can make a significant impact. First, one such area is infrastructure development, where ADB can leverage its expertise and resources to help Uzbekistan overcome critical bottlenecks 
in transportation, energy, and urban services. We would appreciate ADB doing more in health, education, and skills development, and welcome the new initiatives aimed at supporting our secondary education system through improved curricula in science, technology, engineering, and math, implementing projects in skills development for unemployed and underemployed, modernizing the healthcare sector, women empowerment through non-sovereign operations, especially in the regions and rural areas of Uzbekistan, supporting and promoting youth entrepreneurship. Second, we are very much interested in tapping on opportunities of the WeFi program to foster an environment conducive to women's entrepreneurship. Third, we are eager to increase the number of PPP projects in the energy and transport, healthcare, education, water supply, sanitation, and heating with total value of 14 billion US dollars. Fourth, we welcome ADB's private sector transactions. We hope that ADB will continue increasing private sector operations in Uzbekistan and expand offshore some denominated bonds as one of the funding solutions. We're also keen to work with ADB to promote regional cooperation and integration, particularly in the areas of trade, investment, and connectivity. As we look to the future, I believe that partnerships and collaboration will be key to achieving inclusive and sustainable development in Asia and the Pacific. Uzbekistan is committed to working closely with ADB and its member countries to build a better future for our people. Dear colleagues, the governor of Uzbekistan sends his regards and looks forward to meeting you in person very shortly. Thank you for your attention. I thank governor for Uzbekistan. Uh, governors, we will be having a five minutes break. After the break, the alternative governor for Uz Uzbekistan, Mr. Sarba Kamidov, the deputy minister of investment, industry, and trade, will take the chair. Let's have a five minute break. Thank you. Governors, thank you for turning to your seats. I now call on the governor for Switzerland. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. President, Honorable Governors, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Switzerland, let me start by thanking the Republic of Korea for hosting the 56th annual meeting of ADB for the efficient organization and impressive hospitality. ADB member countries face too many crises. The repercussions of Russia's military aggression against Ukraine the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, infl inflationary pressures and climate change have a profound impact on the lives of the people in the Asia and Pacific region. Switzerland commends the ADB for being a reliable partner to support its developing member countries to overcome these multiple crises and not lose focus of longer term development goals. The current challenges call for a renewed effort to make the ADB even more fit for purpose. The ADB in tandem with other MDBs must reconsider how it can step up support for global public goods, especially climate change, while not abandoning its focus on eradicating extreme poverty and inequality. These challenges cannot be addressed by any single institution alone, systematic partnerships and close coordination with other development actors, the private sector and civil society are needed to maximize development impact. We welcome the, in, the ADB's ambition to become the region's climate bank. We look forward to a credible climate action plan. This plan must demonstrate how the bank will deliver on its ambitious climate finance target of 100 billion until 2030. Meeting the target and achieving impact on the ground will depend on fully mainstreaming climate across the bank and strengthening internal climate expertise. We welcome the introduction of the new operating model. This is a first step to ensure that the ADBs can fulfill its ambition of becoming the region's climate bank. We expect the organizational review to enhance the effectiveness of ADB's business model by focusing on quality delivery and longer term investments in the bank's areas of comparative advantages. We look forward 
to the revised safeguards policy allowing the bank to continue to fulfill the highest environmental, social and governance standards. We welcome the review of ADB's capital adequacy framework, using existing capital more efficiently while preserving the bank's financial solidity is critical to meet the increased ambition to address global and regional challenges. We look forward to further progress on the bank's review of the recommendations of the G20 CAF review. Greater capital efficiency must go hand in hand with prudent budgeting. This requires achieving greater cost efficiencies throughout the bank and ensuring that the financial implications of the organizational review are well managed. ADB can continue to count on Switzerland's support in building long-term resilience and development for the benefit of the people of the Asian Pacific region. We look forward to the continued close cooperation with the ADB. Thank you. I thank the Governor for Switzerland. I call on the Governor for Sri Lanka. Uh, Mr. Chair, fellow Governors, President Asakawa, ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege to join with you all uh, in the scenic vistas of Incheon. The COVID-19 pandemic created new challenges for all of us. Growth prospects are weakened due to the tightening financial condition with large downside risk in most countries, even limited fiscal space and deplete in reserves. Due to the continuous depreciation of its currencies, developing countries find it difficult to access international capital. I believe regional developing partners like ADB are expected to play a bigger role guiding the highly impacted countries to face the current challenges. I appreciate ADB's commitment to help its developing member countries to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic by allocating 20.5 billion US dollars from its own resources in 2022. Last year on the 5th <coughs> May, when I chaired the business session of the ADB Board of Governors as the Governor representing Sri Lanka and the Minister of Finance, our country was facing an extremely challenging situation due to social and political turmoil caused by the unprecedented economic crisis resulted by long-standing underlying fiscal vulnerabilities aggravated by the unremitting external shocks, including the Easter Sunday attack in April 2019. COVID-19 pandemic and the Russian-Ukraine war. I remain with gratitude many encouraging messages received by me from many multilateral and bilateral partners, including the ADB, that are willing to assist us at that time. I am happy to announce that today we are looking forward with a glimmer of hope as we have just navigated our way out of the abyss of extreme complication we faced. Suffering of the Sri Lankans have been eased to a certain degree. During the last 10 to 12 months, we have adopted strenuous and difficult actions to control the inflation, and recently we have seen our currency, the Sri Lankan rupee, is marginally appreciating. But we are aware that we cannot be satisfied with the little progress we have made thus far. Sustaining this development is the demanding task ahead of us. Today we begin a new journey to build a vibrant and resilient economy to face the current challenges. Learning from the past, we are undertaking painful reforms. We have laid the basic foundation for transforming the economy and have launched a comprehensive economic reform program seeking to stabilize the economy and to address the macroeconomic challenges. I wish to highlight the successful conclusion of the negotiation uh, with the International Monetary Fund entering into a EFF facility. Sri Lanka remains committed to debt resolution consistent with the IMF program. I urge all parties to agree on a meaningful debt relief package for the countries who are under debt stress. I am confident that by moving forward, we will be able to improve fiscal performance and stabilize the economy in near future. I wish to underscore the importance of financial support from our multilateral and bilateral partners to bridge financing gaps that may arise in our recovery process this year and in the coming couple of years, especially the expenditure required for the social protection in the medium term. Sri Lanka is not above on, uh, alone in that trajectory. Before concluding my brief remark, I must, on behalf of our nation, extend my sincere gratitude to the ADB and President Asakawa for the emergency assistance provided by the ADB to mitigate the economic crisis last year as well as the continued support being extended in the economic stabilization process. We are looking forward to further strengthen the relationship with ADB. Thank you.
I thank the governor for Sri Lanka. I now call on the governor for Hong Kong, China. Thank you, Chairman, fellow governors, President Maza, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to represent Hong Kong, China to participate in this 56th annual meeting of the ADB. I would like to thank the government of the Republic of Korea, the management and staff of ADB for the excellent arrangements. The theme of this year's annual meeting, Rebounding Asia, Recover, Reconnect and Reform, is most timely. And the four R's are indeed the common goals of all countries and regions in the post-COVID period. We are delighted to see the commitments by ADB through financing and knowledge solutions to assist member countries in not only recovering, but bolstering domestic resource mobilization and enabling a more favorable environment for private sector investment in order to channel and connect resources and investments from both public and private sources. We are also encouraged to see multiple reforms and digital transformation initiatives being delivered externally to member countries and internally, especially with the completion of the organization review in 2022. In order to achieve ADB's four R's, Hong Kong, China can and will continue to contribute along the following three E's. The first E is empowering private capital. One of the global issues that we have been dealing with is climate change and empowering private capital is pivotal. Because of climate change, there have been increasing catastrophic events around the world. Our government established a regulatory regime for insurance-linked securities, ILS, or what we call cat bonds, and launched a pilot grant scheme to sponsor the issues of ILS in the first of 2021, facilitating four catastrophe bond issuances with a total issuance amount of 560 million US dollars. The most recent one was the ILS, or insurance-linked securities, issued by the World Bank last month with an issuance amount of 350 million US dollars, providing coverage for earthquake risk in Chile. We believe this type of debt instrument is particularly relevant and important, especially for small island developing countries, which are most vulnerable to the rising trend of extreme climate. So we do welcome ADB members to make use of Hong Kong's platform to issue ILS. Apart from our Climate Action Plan 2025, which strives to reduce carbon emissions by 50% before 2023 and achieves carbon neutrality by the year 2050, we also launched the Core Climate in October last year to trade international voluntary carbon credits. The platform, what we call Core Climate, is uniquely positioned to offer Hong Kong dollar and B settlement for the trading of international voluntary carbon credits. Credits on the platform come from internationally certified carbon projects from around the world, including carbon avoidance, reduction, and removal projects. Furthermore, we have also issued nearly 16 billion US dollars equivalent of government green bonds since the year 2019, including tokenized green bond this February the first tokenized green bond ever issued by our government. Hong Kong, China is well positioned as an international center for green tech and green finance. The second E, other than empowering private capital, is enhancing connectivity. Like we all know now, it is easy to reach consensus to address issues of common interest. And this connectivity issue is also highlighted by a fellow governor from Thailand just now. Geographically, our proximity to the mainland is the best get gateway to connect the world with the mainland China. Our well-established financial infrastructure and regulations also allow us to seamlessly connect with the Chinese market. We've launched a number of mutual market, capital market access schemes with the mainland, including the Stock Connect, Bond Connect, Wealth Management Connect, and mutual recognition of funds between the mainland and Hong Kong, China. Notably, the northbound Bond Connect which is one of our connect programs between the capital markets of both Hong Kong and the mainland, had a record high of average daily turnover at 37 billion RMB in Q1 this year. And last year, regulators in the mainland and Hong Kong, China, issued a joint announcement on their proposal for the specified mainland Hong Kong, China financial institutions to collaborate in establishing mutual access arrangements between the interest rate swap markets of the two places. And this provides a more comprehensive product suite for investors globally who are assessing through Hong Kong, China into Chinese capital markets. The third E is about enabling technology. Talking about technology, the hot topics today must be about fintech and virtual asset. 
which are a new era and a new area in which many jurisdictions are now conducting consultations or contemplating regulation to facilitate reform of the financial systems and protection of investors' interests. In this regard, Hong Kong China promulgated a policy statement on development of virtual assets in Hong Kong back in October last year, setting out the vision and policy direction of the government. We are fully aware of the recent operational crisis of virtual asset exchanges, and hence, we have been taking preventive measures in the current and future regulatory frameworks to address the risk of any similar incidents, including requiring a licensed virtual asset exchange to ensure proper asset custody, ensuring financial soundness, and avoiding conflict of interest. We are happy to share our experience with ADB members in this regard and learn from you all further down the road. Leveraging on our status as an international financial center, the largest offshore Roman business hub, and our development as a risk management center and international center for green tech and green finance, Hong Kong China stands ready, as always, to continue contributing more to ADB's important work in positioning as a climate bank, as highlighted by President Massa just now, in achieving prosperity through unity in the region. Thank you. I thank the governor for Hong Kong China. I call on the governor for Georgia. Thank you, Chair. Esteemed President Asakawa, honorable governors, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to represent Georgia at 56th annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank, and I'm grateful to the dedicated team of ADB and the government of the Republic of Korea for organizing this important event. It's more than half a century since the bank's first annual meeting, and over this period, the bank has helped to navigate through turbulences and supported significant changes in the region for the remarkable development. The most recent and ongoing global challenge are at most the most uh, complex and diverse one, and the ADB's role even more important to help the countries of the region to address them. Indeed, we all are in the face of recovering, reconnecting and reforming, further while the ongoing global development, war in Ukraine caused by Russian illegal invasion and related to the economic crisis make the prospect of the future full of uncertainties. Focusing on the importance of the implementation of Strategy 2030 must help us to stay on the track, but flexibility to promptly respond to constant unexpected turns coupled with the decisive actions for the long-term impact should be guided principle for the ADB and development partners in general. During the pandemic and post-pandemic period, Georgia has proved significant economic resilience by remarkable recovery both in private and public sectors. 2022 was indeed extremely difficult and unpredictable year globally. Along the negative impacts of the crisis, factors such as shift of the transit corridors, movement of the financial and human capital, <coughs> IT technologies, and enhanced connectivity in general, as well as higher than originally envisaged post-COVID recovery, had reverse impact of the economic development. Overall, we had a double-digit double economic growth during two consecutive years, 10.5% in 2021 and 10.1% in 2022. While the main challenge in the economy inflation was moderated 2.7% for the last year and also the budget deficit up to 2.8%. Estimating temporary versus long-term impact is key to running prudent policy for the sustainable development. Georgia continues successful cooperation with the bank through its diversified portfolio uh, for public and private sector. We trust and believe in the future cooperation with the ADB in the priority area for Georgia. Energy security and independence through increased green and renewable generation and enhanced connectivity in transmission, including the upcoming Black Sea Undersea Cable Project road and digital connectivity infrastructure, reforming corporate governance, and investing in human capital are at most the high priority areas of our agenda. To bridge to the bright future, we all 
requires strong regional synergy and support of the development partners. And I wish all of you and our cooperation a great su success in rebounding stronger. Thank you. I thank the governor for Georgia. I now call on the governor for Belgium. Thank you, Chair. On behalf of Belgium, I would like to express gratitude to the Republic of Korea for hosting this 56th annual meeting of the Board of Governors of the ADB. Belgium is taking this opportunity to thank President Masatsugu Asakawa for his leadership and commitment to the international climate and development agenda in the Asia and Pacific region during times of multiple global and regional crises. Due to compounding short and long-term challenges against the background of record debt levels and rising debt service costs that threaten to limit the fiscal space of some DMCs, financing needs are increasing. In this regard, we, strongly, we are strongly supportive of ADB's CAF review. We welcome the proposals from management to implement the G20 CAF recommendations in order to increase ADB's financing capacity. We encourage ADB to continue on this path and work further close with the board on all recommendations from the G20 CAF review. Additionally, against the backdrop of rising debt in some client countries, Belgium would also like to underline the importance to deliver extra efforts in mobilizing private resources with existing and new tools. Therefore, we were happy to hear from the ADB president during yesterday's governor's seminar that it's a major importance to enhance domestic resource mobilization in the region. On climate, Belgium welcomes ADB's engagement with the board and other IFIs towards implementation of the Paris Alignment. Given the global significance of the climate agenda, we would like to underline the importance of ADB's performance in climate finance and operations in the region, a region where climate change hits hard. Climate-related innovative initiatives such as the ETM and IFCAP are the way to go forward. Belgium is looking forward to the results of these initiatives and encourage continued close engagement with the Board of Directors in ADB's goal to become Asia and the Pacific's climate bank, where also private sector should play an active role. Furthermore, we, all, we also look forward to a forthcoming midterm review of ADB strategy 2030. We expect the Board of Directors to be briefed in detail in the coming months of the, on the current status of the strategy, on the results achieved so far, and on the areas where ADB might be lagging behind. We need a clear picture of the bank's progress and the areas where ADB needs to speed up. Given the scarcity of resources, we emphasize once more the importance for better prioritization in country strategies to make sure that the bank acts where it has a clear comparative advantage and create the highest development impact. We would like to stress the importance of fostering long-term strategic investments and ambitious structural reforms, including a reflection on potential improvements to be made regarding the use of PBLs to make sure these are promoting real structural policy reforms and institutional changes that would generate long-term sustainable growth. In conclusion, Belgium would like to express its appreciation towards the bank staff who continue their hard work in eradicating poverty against an unusual challenging background and multiple crises. Thank you. I thank the governor for Belgium. I understand that the governor for Finland will deliver joint remarks on behalf of the four Nordic member countries of ADB. I now call on the governor for Finland deliver the remarks. Mr. Chair, Mr. President, distinguished governors, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of four Nordic countries, namely Denmark, Finland, Norway and Sweden, I wish to express our gratitude to the government of the Republic of Korea and the ADB for hosting this annual meeting in the city of Incheon. We are glad that this year's meeting with the theme of uh, rebounding Asia uh, takes place in a more positive context 
despite the fact that the region is still recovering from the impacts of the pandemic, the food crisis, rising inflation and financial tightening, all aggravated by Russia's aggression uh, against Ukraine. Climate change, biodiversity loss and ongoing crisis situations continue to increase fragility and vulnerability. Also, unsustainable debt burdens in some countries hinder the development to achieve uh, sustainable development goals. All these risks have a negative impact on the core mandate of ADB in eradicating extreme poverty and creating economic prosperity. And the most vulnerable countries are affected the most. To support its developing member countries uh, to recover, reconnect and reform, we think ADB is well positioned to accelerate inclusive, green and sustainable development in the region. We uh, want to first highlight especially the bank's role in incentivizing DMCs to increase domestic resource mobilization and facilitate private sector mobilization. Domestic resource mobilization, especially taxation, enables societies to provide their basic functions and services and progressive taxation reduces economic inequalities. Taxation and good governance go hand in hand and good governance is essential for attracting sustainable investments. We particularly welcome the initiative on the Asia Pacific Tax Hub, which is a right step towards increasing regional cooperation on taxation. Also, private sector mobilization is fundamental in catalyzing development impacts and creating new and better jobs, generating new tax revenues and leveraging further sustainable investments in DMCs. The ADB plays an essential role in the region in remedying market failures and building enabling market conditions, including through the ADF in fragile and conflict affected states and small island states. We welcome the target to increase private sector operations to one third of ADB operations by 2024. The new operating model allows the ADP to respond more efficiently to the challenges faced by DMCs. The decentralization, including the new regional centers, strengthen the bank's ability to respond to cross-border and global challenges, such as climate action, protecting the biodiversity, halting loss of nature, enhancing food security, and improving global health. Strengthening uh, development effectiveness uh, should be in the heart of the organizational reform. The capital costs and risks of the reform should be adequately assessed and fully accounted for. To be Asia's climate bank, uh, there is untapped potential for mainstreaming climate action across all the bank's operations. Also, Efforts to mainstream gender equality should be strengthened across ADB operations throughout the life cycle of ADB funded projects. Internally, diversity should be encouraged in, uh, also in executive positions by hiring, promoting and retaining more women in international recruited and executive positions. And we also encourage the ADB to work together with other MDBs to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the whole multilateral development finance system and to share best practices in implementing the CAF reform recommendations. Lastly, we commend the ADB to be fully Paris aligned by July this year and wish that the Paris alignment assessments are robust and transparently reported on. Reaching the USD 100 billion climate finance target is key to building trust and is fundamental to accelerate green transition at country level. Leveraging climate finance with IFCAP will be part of bridging climate finance gap in the region. We emphasize that climate finance, in particular for adaptation and resilience building, need to be made accessible, especially for the most climate vulnerable uh, countries. We further underline the importance of green transition for deploying renewable and affordable energy as default, as well as smart, low and zero carbon solutions. For adaptation, early warning systems provide one important solution to adapt to the effects of climate change. The energy transition mechanism, which was launched in Bali last year, promotes fair and just transition in decarbonization of coal heavy 
uh, economies in uh, Southeast Asia. To close, the Nordic, the Nordic countries stand ready to work closely with the ADB to achieve SDGs and the Paris Agreement in the region through sustainable, resilient and inclusive development. Thank you. I thank the Governor for Finland. I now call on the Governor for Ireland. Uh, Mr. Chairman, President, fellow delegations, uh, on behalf of Ireland, I would like to thank the Government of Korea for hosting this 56th annual meeting. Thank you for putting together such a compelling program of events and for your very warm welcome to your country. We would also like to thank President Asakawa, together with the management and staff of the bank, on the professional and organization of the event. Ireland would also like to recognize the excellent work of bank management and staff over the past year. Their commitment and enthusiasm is very much appreciated. Along with the ongoing need to address climate change and continue the economic development of the region, the overlapping crisis of COVID and the illegal Russian invasion of Ukraine have brought very unwelcome uncertainty over the last year. Many hard-earned development gains and economic progress that have been secured in recent periods have been eroded. The impact of climate change has become ubiquitous and this has been compounded globally by persistent high inflation, especially in regard to energy and food security. The implications of tighter monetary policy by economies outside the region have also been unwelcome. A multilateral and coordinated response to these challenges is imperative. The ADB is well placed to be at the vanguard of this response. Ireland continues to support the bank's commitment to mobilize 100 billion US dollars in climate finance by 2030. We believe that those who have contributed least to the problem of climate change should be afforded the greatest support in addressing these consequences. As such, we uh, reassert our commitment to advocate on behalf of small island development states who continue to bear the brunt of climate change. Many of these countries are vulnerable to the severe challenges of food insecurity, high debt distress and trade deficits in energy. Ireland is very proud to finance the Single Donor Trust Fund hosted in the bank for the benefit of building climate change and disaster resilience in these cities. Ultimately, we think if the ADB is to become the region's climate bank, which is its ambition, climate action must be embedded across all of its actions, actions from inception to delivery and underpinned by the assignment of additional and appropriate climate skills across the regions and in headquarters. We look forward to further, further progress on this work over the coming year. We uh, acknowledge that recent global challenges have justified the use of emergency and budget support to alleviate fiscal pressures of developing member countries. In this regard, we believe that there is a place for high quality climate policy based lending, which, if developed and implemented effectively, will have the potential to, deliver, to deliver significant developed impacts and progress the bank's ambitious climate finance targets. Having said that, it is critical that the bank continues to successfully generate a robust pipeline of high impact climate finance projects, particularly in the area of climate adaptation. Ireland acknowledges the actions taken to date in relation to the new operating model, which is a very important step toward and forward by the bank in NDP, in NDP reform. We look forward to hearing about further progress over the coming months until we, we meet again in 2024 at the annual meetings. We also look forward to the upcoming midterm review of Strategy 2030. This is a very important piece of work that will occur in tandem with the implementation of the new operating model against the backdrop of the overall NDP and reform agenda. In this regard, we welcome the work on the G20 CAF recommendations. The ADB's response must be analysed and reviewed on its own merits uh, against the context of the bank's strategies and operations while recognising the needs of the region and leveraging its competitive advantages. In other words, we need to recognise the bank's unique selling point and the important work undertaken in the region over recent years. Parallel to the CAF work, domestic resource mobilisation in in initiatives are important levers to help achieve the SDGs and secure sustainable economic development in the region. Effective and efficient taxation provides a reliable source of revenues that are critical in this regard. We note the important work of the, of the Asia Pacific Tax Hub and its assistance to DMCs in the area of domestic tax policy and administration reforms. We also recognise the ADP's continued achievements in gender equality in its operations and trust that this important work will continue. The report to the Board of Governors on gender diversity is very welcome. We continue to support the efforts made by the Board Working Group on gender diversity to improve, improve female representation on the board and acknowledge that greater diversity will enhance the quality and credibility of the board of directors' decision making. Finally, the ADF plays a vital role supporting the recovery of the most vulnerable and poorest DMCs who are currently faced with relenting crisis. We look forward to negotiations in ADF 14 later this year and appreciate the engagement by management during the recent ADF 13 midterm review. We look forward to a fruitful year of discussions on this work until we meet again at the annual meeting for the pledging meeting. Thank you, Chairman. I thank the Governor for Ireland. I now call on the Governor for Luxembourg.
Thank you, Chair. Um, President Sakava, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Luxembourg, let me thank you, uh, the, the government of the Republic of Korea and uh, the city of Incheon uh, for their gracious hospitality. President, in October 21, you made a bold announcement to deliver climate financing to the MCs of up to 100 billion by 2030. And yesterday you stated that there will be no development if we do not address climate change. We very much agree with those statements. Indeed, across continents, climate change is threatening development and the achievement of the SDGs. And the current geopolitics do not help either. I sincerely hope we can turn this around. And if not, at the very end, I would very much like to say that at least we tried. Now, focusing on climate change should not be the only target or priority of ADB. Threats to biodiversity needs to be addressed with the same sense of urgency. We actually need a strategy and an action plan that tackles both issues at the same time. Given the sheer magnitude of the challenge, you need to throw all the weight into your punch. Or, if you prefer, rethink the way you do business, revamp your organizational structure, be one, be creative. Also, you will need mass, mass to punch hard. In other terms, ADB needs to use its capital more efficiently and effectively and look for ways to expand its landing capacity. We are confident that ADB will square this circle, unlock, unlock additional financing, maintain long-term financial sustainability and the AAA rating, i.e. the base of its business model. One last remark. In fighting climate change, and protecting biodiversity, focus on the most vulnerable and the poorest, no matter in which country you are operating. Thank you. I thank the governor for Luxembourg. I now call on the governor for Spain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, President Asakawa, honorable governors, representative of member states, ladies and gentlemen. In the face of increased uncertainty, the Asian and Pacific region is proving more resilient than expected. The worst macroeconomic outcomes contemplated in the fall have not materialized so far, but the situation continues to be fragile, especially for the most vulnerable countries. The global financial safety net has helped ensure financial stability as well as support to the most vulnerable countries. However, successive shocks are weighing on the recovery and macrofinancial stability. Inflation has moderated somewhat, but underlying price pressures remain sticky. Furthermore, tighter monetary policy stances, reduced fiscal space, as well as elevated debt in vulnerable countries pose some risk in the financial sector. The compounding effects of extreme weather events, soil erosion, air pollution, and water shortages reinforce the need to build resiliency and further invest in adaptation and mitigation. Once more, the situation is extremely difficult for many of the bank members, not only in the short term, but also with a longer term perspective. Indeed, existing challenges hinder the, their development opportunities and make the achievement of the purpose of this bank a difficult endeavor. In some countries, poverty has increased, food, food insecurity is worsening, learning lo losses are large, human capital has suffered, and inequality has risen. We believe that in spite of the many difficulties and the ensuing change in priorities, the bank was once again up to the task. It continued improving its toolkit to better serve DMC's needs while launching the organizational review. While we are supportive of the seeds, we want to be confident that the new operating model will prioritize project implementation, redesign project teams accordingly, rethink business processes, and focus even more on the development impact of all our intervention while helping the bank in rebuilding a strong pipeline of investment projects and achieving our strong climate ambition. In this regard, Continuous engagement with an board oversight of the process of deployment of the new operational model are essential to build support, accountability, and move forward on a steady path. We welcome the launch of the mid review of Strategy 2030 and look forward to the consultations and the first results of this exercise. While all operational 
priorities of Strategy 2030 are relevant, I would like to point out two areas to which Spain confers special attention. One is Operational Priority 1, addressing remaining poverty and reducing inequalities. 78% of ATV's 2022 commitments supported this priority. New efforts are needed to ensure that those most affected, poor communities, older people, and persons with special needs are not left out during the recovery phase. A second area of particular attention to us is Operational Priority 4, making cities more livable where there is a need for further support towards urban development with additional emphasis on project implementation to improve performance and development impact as these interventions have the potential to positively change the quality of life of millions of people across the region. Given the important role that local and subnational institutions have in the economic development and well-being of citizens, we will look forward towards discussing among all stakeholders on how to better engage with such institutions to ensure ownership and increased development effectiveness. On the safeguards reviews currently in process, I would just like to reiterate our support to the way the bank is managing the whole process and the objective of moving towards a performance standards model. We appreciate the efforts of staff and the board in moving ahead with a thorough review of its staff and in the process considering the recommendations from the G20 independent review of NDB staff. Let me just point here to the incremental lending that some of these measures can bring about to make economies more prosperous, resilient, inclusive, and sustainable. Before finishing my intervention, I want to note that Spain follows Sweden and will assure the presidency of the Council of the European Union starting in July. We are ready to work with other European Union members, with the bank, and in particular with the European Representative Office towards an even closer cooperation between the bank and the EU institutions the private sector and civil society organizations. Let me finish by thank thanking on behalf of Spain, both ADB and the government of the Republic of Korea for making this meeting possible and for the excellent organization. Thank you, you also to all ADB staff and board of directors for their work during the past months. Thank you. I thank the governor for Spain. I now call on the governor for Armenia. Dear Chairman, dear President Asakawa, distinguished governors and delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend my warm greetings to everyone in this meeting and to thank the Korean government for hosting ADB's 56th annual meeting in beautiful Incheon. This annual meeting is a great chance to discuss our rich agenda and ways that ADB could be more adaptive in this fast-changing environment to better support its member countries. Rising regional and global security threats and increased spending on defense create huge challenges for the smooth implementation of green and inclusive growth agenda and achievement of sustainable development goals by 2030. Addressing climate change risks continues to be among the key priorities for ADB and for the member countries as well. We welcome ADB's 100 billion climate financing ambition by 2030. The Armenian government consistently follows all its international climate change commitments, including the Paris Agreement. Moreover, we have recently increased our efforts in joining current global agendas and initiatives on climate change. We would also like to highlight that our recent policy-based loan with ADB includes climate change actions under fiscal management and finance sector policies to help achieve the government's mitigation and adaptation objectives. Currently, ADB is in a very important stage of its transformation with the implementation of its new operating model. We also have had a chance to discuss and express our views on the new model, and we do hope that it will modernize ways on working to make ADB more responsive, agile, and closer to members. The needs of developing member countries must remain at the forefront of ADB's thinking as you roll out this new model and we expect coherent and timely implementation. Cooperation in private sector is a key component of our partnership with ADB and we would like to expand this further. We see significant opportunities to achieve our mutually established goals through expanding ADB's involvement in the Armenian private sector. This is not only seen as additional source of financing, but also a way to develop corporate, corporate governance culture in our country. I would like also to express gratitude for ADB's technical assistance 
which support our reforms in a number of priority sectors in addition to the sovereign and non-sovereign financing instruments. Those instruments help us localize ADB's experience in different areas and develop our capacities and knowledge, which will then serve as the basis for successful implementation of our future reforms. We welcome the Board of Directors' third annual report to the Board of Governors on gender diversity, which reveals the historic achievement of reaching 50-50 representation at the alternate director level, and express our hope that in short term we will have a chance to acknowledge reaching 50-50 at executive director level as well. This is indeed very encouraging for more historic future achievements. Lastly, I would like to take this opportunity to announce Armenia's intention to join ADF 14 replenishment for 2025-2028 as a donor. This, with this intention, we want to express our gratitude for the support we received from ADF many years ago and also our dedication to ADB's values and willingness to support Group A and B countries to address the challenges they face. In this uncertain environment, ADB's huge convening power and experience in promoting regional cooperation and integration are more important and needed than ever. More active involvement by our members in various regional initiatives may act as an additional factor to reach sustainability and peace in Asia and Pacific. In closing, I would like to thank the ADB Board of Directors, management and staff for all the support provided to Armenia and I'm looking forward to strengthening and enhancing our strategic partnership. Thank you. I thank the Governor for Armenia. I understand that the Governor for Papua New Guinea will deliver joint remarks on behalf of 14 Pacific member countries of ADB. I now call on the Governor for Papua New Guinea to deliver the remarks. Thank you, Chair, President Massa, fellow Governors, ADB Board, members, management, ladies and gentlemen, warm and specific greetings. What a pleasure to be meeting again and in such a beautiful country as the Republic of Korea, a country that has demonstrated so clearly a structured part to economic development from which its people have benefited greatly. Thank you for your hospitality on behalf of 14 Pacific Island countries represented through this statement. There are four themes covered in our joint statement the climate change, risk-based risk -based approach to financial inclusion, leverage and ADV resources, and project sustainability. However, my comment will cover only the first three of this team and in a shortened form. Mr. President, the catastrophic burden of climate change is falling off our Pacific state, but we are not part of the carbon pollution driving the problem. The burden of the red tape and financial exclusion falls on our Pacific people, but we were not part of the money laundering and terrorist financing issues that is driving the problem. The global actions are having tremendous adverse impact on our people. Today, I ask ADB, Asian Development Bank, and the wider international community to further strengthen their actions on the global public uh, good issues to assist Pacific development member countries. On climate change, we continue to see its devastating impact in our region. In this regard, we strongly support the decision of the ADB to become Asia Climate Bank. We welcome the moves of the ADB to dramatically increase funding for the, the climate program. We also call on the ADB to be an advocate for the climate change adaptation funding on a very concessional terms. Given the impact of global changes and once in a century pandemic, we need new approaches to deal with financing needs of all Pacific countries. It is globally inappropriate to ask these innocent countries that are bearing the heavy cost of climate change to have to incur more expensive debt where debt interest costs will displace our health and education spending. This is just unfair. Pacific nations continue to face major issues with the connectivity to the world. This isolation constrains opportunity to engage in global economy. Small size and remoteness are a reality. However, there 
are global regulations that are, cre are created by the international system that have made the specific isolation worse. We have acknowledged the objective of some of these international standards, such as the anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism ter financing requirements, but we are very concerned about how these worthy objectives are being implemented. We applaud the work of the ADB in assisting in reducing the cost of complying with the global regulation, including through the work of moving to electronic know your customer requirements. In the view of the commitments set out by small island development states in Samoa pathway and consistent with the sustainable development goal, we call on ADB through its international presence to strategically engage with other international organizations such as the G20 FATF to defend and support Pacific interests in the forum discussing global financial regulations, particularly around AML, CTF, and, and tax governance rules and issues. Support for compliance is welcome, but sometimes the greater support can have more better global regulations in place. Mr. President, as we all, all are quickly aware, recent years have been tough economically. Indeed, for the Pacific, many consider that, that 2020 through to 2023 are the three worst years the Pacific region has faced in the, in the past three decades. The impact of global, global pandemic, a particularly severe impacts on many of our economies that continue to reverberate today. On top of that, the impact of Russian invasion of UK has dramatically increased cost of living facing our families, slowed growth op options for our exports, and dramatically increased interest costs on our debt. Across Pacific, much higher level of debt have been incurred to respond to once in a, clim once in a century cost of the debt. We call on ADB to do everything within its balance sheets to assist Pacific Island countries with, external, with these external shocks to the Pacific, which have both increased debt and increased interest costs. Mr. President, beyond this, focus, beyond this areas of focus, we of course continue with our earlier views on the importance of human capital development, including early childhood support and reducing gender-based violence, digital connections, connectivity, unlocking the private sector development, continuous support for capacity building and promoting diversity and inclusion at the ADB. In conclusion, Ms. Mr. President, as we approach yet another uh, extraordinary year dealing with what is now being called as historic poly crisis, I would like to thank you and all the staff of the ADB for their work in supporting the Pacific. It is greatly appreciated. We look forward to even higher level of engagement and support over coming years as ADB transforms itself a climate bank, a bank which excels in its mandate, including special attention paid to small Pacific states that are facing increasing fragility under existing global arrangement. Thank you for your attention. I thank the Governor for Papua New Guinea. I now call on the Governor for Fiji. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, President of the ADB, Honorable Governors, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first convey Fiji's warm greetings to the people and government of the Republic of Korea for hosting the ADB's 56th annual meeting. I would also like to extend our appreciation to the President, the management and the staff of the Asian Development Bank this is my first uh, ADB annual meeting, and I appreciate all the discussions so far. Uh, Fiji and the Pacific Islands continue to face unique challenges that have been exacerbated in recent years. For Fiji, the shocks of the COVID-19 pandemic and a series of natural disasters in late 2020 and early 2021 devastated the economy, jobs, government revenues, and socioeconomic conditions. Mr. Chairman, the ADB's long-standing partnership and ex extraordinary support to Fiji 
along with other development partners during the crisis is allowing us to recover quickly and strongly. While rec recovery is on track, extensive damages are far-reaching. We are now facing a triple threat from excessively high government debt, delayed investment in critical infrastructure, and the impact of unforeseen shocks from climate change and other global and local risks that require urgent attention. Fiji as a nation must intensify its effort to combat climate change, loss of biodiversity, and rising inequality, and build a sustainable and inclusive economy for the future, underscoring the need to mainstream climate change adaptation strategies across all development sectors in line with the 2050 Blue Pacific Strategy. This is of particular interest uh, to ADB. We see that ADB's continued support to Fiji is now more than ever needed to help pave the way out of the critical challenges the economy faces and promote future sustainable growth and development. While we are well <coughs> aware of ADB's ongoing investment in achieving climate resilient development in many of its member countries, I cannot stress enough the importance of increasing this momentum to ensure that economic growth is achieved in Fiji and the Pacific and the most vulnerable nations in the face of climate change given the extreme climate vulnerabilities and financial and structural barriers. Improved access to concessional financing and grant funding is vital, especially for vulnerable small developing states building climate resilience and rebuilding macro fiscal buffers lost during the pandemic. In this regard, we call on the ADB to increase its concessionality and align it to those offered by its peers such as the IDA and other bilateral partners. This is likely to have minimal impact on ADB's balance sheet, but a greater support and development impact for smaller members and at the same time allow the bank to support and maintain its competitive position in the post-COVID lending environment where financial decisions are price sensitive. Building climate resilience, adaptation, and post-disaster reconstruction is not cheap, especially for small island developing states who have contributed the least to climate change. We would also like to call on climate financiers, such as the Green Climate Fund, to simplify the excess accreditation requirements and reporting templates. We need more coordination between climate funds, as small government administrations and many donor partners need help to adapt and comply with the varied standards and procedures each climate finance delivery channel requires. As a climate bank for Asia and the Pacific, we seek ADB to use its convening power to enhance and facilitate access to these funds for small developing states. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I thank the ADB Board of Directors, management, and staff for all the support provided to Fiji until now, and look forward to further strengthening our strategic partnership. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the Governor for Fiji. I call on the Governor for Cambodia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, Mr. President uh, Asakawa, fellow governors, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to join our fellow governors in the 56th annual meeting of the Board of Governors of the ADB to change the ideas and strategies for addressing the global and regional development challenges that we are facing today. Mr. Chairman, Cambodia has successfully contained the spread of the COVID-19 virus, having fully vaccinated the population, which enabled the full reopening of the national economy in the fourth quarter of 2021. As a result, Cambodia's economy has recovered with the modest growth rate of 3% in 2021 and 5.2% in 2022. I would like to acknowledge and thank the bank for its support in the amount of 250 million US dollars towards the government's counter -cyclical, cyclical spending under the COVID-19 active response in 2020. The support from the program loan together with other sources of financing has made significant contributions towards Cambodia achieving the recovery pace in 2021 and 2022. Advancing further, Cambodia will continue to need similar support, which will contribute to the full recovery of the economy 
from the downturn caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and other shocks. Despite the successful implementation of the government's economic recovery strategy, Cambodia is among other most vulnerable countries prone to impacts of the disasters from floods, droughts, cyclones, and heat waves. Our targeted climate resilient and green infrastructure development will also come with additional upfront capital cost, which will compound the pressure on Cambodia's fiscal space. It must be recognized that the transitions to a full green economy will need to be gradual and supported by grant financing and technical assistance, as well as balance with the country, competitiveness, sustainable growth, and a long-term objective. Mr. Chairman, I congratulate the bank for the, the strong operational performance in 2022 with the total commitment of in loans, grants, equity investments, guarantees, and technical assistance reaching the amount of 20.5 billion US dollar and an additional amount of 11.4 billion US dollar mobilized in co-financing. For Cambodia, the bank provided funding in a total amount of 620 million US dollar for nine projects of which the amount of 387 million US, US dollar was on concessional terms and about 40 million US dollar were made available in ADF grants in 2022. In addition, the amount of about 169 million US dollar was mobilized on concessional terms in grants and in grants in co-financing for these projects. Moving forward, Cambodia would appreciate the bank's continuous efforts in providing our country with highly concessional loans and grants. With the endorsement of the bank's new operating model, Cambodia also hopes to witness a more responsive and agile operation from the bank by shifting the responsibility as well as the professional and technical expertise to the country's office. In conclusion, I would like to extend in particular my sincere appreciation to the government of the Republic of Korea for the very warm welcome during our stay in this beautiful smart city of Songdu. I also would like to express my thanks to the ADB management team and staff for making excellent arrangements for this 56th annual meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the governor for Cambodia. Uh, governors, we'll be having five minute break. After the break, the governor for Korea, Honorable Kim Ho Chu, will take the chair. Governors, thank you for returning to your seat. I'd like to thank the alternate governors for the Republic of Korea and the alternate governor for Uzbekistan for co-chairing the business sessions. I now call on the governor for Timor Leste to deliver the remarks. Thank you, Chair, Honorable President Nasekawa, Honorable Governors, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> it is a privilege to address my esteemed colleagues in person in ADB annual meeting after the outbreak of COVID-19. We are now finally approaching a new era where we can once again focus in our shared goal of eradication extremely poverty and achievement of prosperity, inclusive, resilience, and sustainable ASEAN and the Pacific. The bank, the ADB has been a critical partner and largest portfolio in Timor-Leste. Over 100 million is committed, has been, has been fundamental to awards our Young Nation Foundation and continued development, particularly in the area of infrastructures. A small island developing state, Timor-Leste is keenly aware of the need to deepen our connection, connectivity with our regional neighbors. As we put COVID behind us, Timor-Leste look forward to better reconnecting for the future. Technologically, through the investment in the high-speed international internet access. Geographically, 
through major investment in, in redeveloping our international airport as well our commercial shipping port and politically and economically through our association as the 11 member state to the ASEAN community. I use this opportunity to convoy the message from Honorable Prime Minister General Taurmatan Ruak to Honorable President Massa. The Timor Leste are grateful to have benefit from the ADB under your leadership residence. The ADB long term support in our journey to award member as ASEAN members. I, will, I also use this opportunity to thanks to, to thanks to extending appreciation to the ASEAN member state delegating present in this annual meeting. We are very much look forward to forming part of and continue to the ASEAN community to and contribute to the ASEAN community. Ladies and gentlemen, this year Timor Leste will be conducting our nine national parliament elections. The current government, with support from the different, different development partners, including the ADB, has engaged in deep relate to the public financial management reform for improved service delivery and domestic revenue mobilization. Positively position the incoming government to continue on our paths of reforms. To conclude, Timor-Leste remain committed to our shared vision as prosperous Timor-Leste with the healthy, safety, well-educated population. I trust under the leadership of Honorable President Massa, ADB will be continue support our effort, particular, particularly, particularly in the area of the climate resilience infrastructures, increased connectivity, and economy the verification. I thank you, Chair. Thanks, the Governor for Timor Last. Uh, next floor, go to the Maldives. Thank you, uh, Excellency President Massa, uh, Chair of the Board of Governors, Distinguished Governors, Assalamu Alaikum and a good afternoon. The past few years have been the toughest of times in recent history for many of us. But it was also a time when we all came together to achieve the common goal of tackling and recovering from the pandemic. We have made great progress on this front thanks to the concerted effort of all and the corresponding economic rebound is well underway with developing and emerging Asia expected to grow the fastest in 2023 and over the medium term. In 2021, Maldives' GDP grew at 41.6%, followed last year by around 13.6%. This year, we expect our real GDP uh, to increase around 9.4%. Despite this, many of our economies will continue to bear the scars of this recent ordeal for a number of years in the form of deteriorated fiscal and external sector positions and especially elevated debt levels. This was partly due to the dry up of revenues due to the economic slowdown during the pandemic, but also because we prioritize saving lives and livelihoods despite the cost. I believe most of us made the right call. But we now need to treat these vulnerabilities to ensure that the economic rebound continues and that the path forward to build back better is clear. Strict fiscal austerity measures to achieve this actually risks derailing the progress we are making on the economic front. Indeed, I believe that the right approach is growing out of the growing out of our current troubles, or in other words, placing even more emphasis on economic growth. And business is the key to this. As successful businesses drive growth, create jobs, and generate tax revenues. The economic vision we have for the Maldives is to build a sustainable, resilient, free, and open economy that is well-placed to tap into emerging opportunities around the globe. 
We are currently in a phase of developing key infrastructure that will be essential to achieve this. We remain open and flexible to create the most favorable business climate. This has involved reforming the relevant laws and regulations to bring about pro-business reforms, removing red tape and taking measures to fight corruption and provide a level playing field for all. But unilateral reform can only achieve so much. We all need to come together to make a concerted effort as we did during the pandemic to facilitate cross-border trade, reduce tariffs and break down barriers between our economies and peoples. Asia and the Pacific is the most populous region globally. And what we do, even if amongst ourselves to begin with, can go a long way to ensuring sustainable economic development over the long term. The ADB is well positioned to facilitate and cater to large investment requirements through the strong platforms and networks. Only through realizing our lucrative investment opportunities can we truly prosper as countries. And for, and for that we count on the strong support of ADB for access to more concessional financing to unlock capital from the private sector and for regional cooperation to thrive. And with that, I conclude. Thank you and assalamu alaikum. Thanks to Governor for Maldives. I now call on the Governor for Cook Island. I see we are saving the best for last. <laughs> President Massa, Honorable Governors, it's a pleasure to be here for the, this meeting, and I'd like to acknowledge the tremendous hospitality of the Republic of Korea in hosting this meeting uh, in such an amazing country. Distinguished Governors, we are aware of the triple threats of climate change, COVID-19 economic recovery, and the energy and commodity inflation increases exacerbated by the conflict in Ukraine. We have heard for two years that the Pacific faces unique and immediate challenges in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. We know this. Among Pacific member countries, the Cook Islands suffered the largest economic contraction. Our GDP contracted by 30% during our border closures. This decline is the largest in our history. Funding the necessary response to the COVID-19 pandemic has come at a steep cost for our country. It has consumed the government's reserves and required the taking on of substantial amount of debt funding that has more than doubled our net debt to 47% of GDP. The large increase in debt and the servicing this requires for some of the loans with shorter terms is a key challenge for us. Our debt servicing costs are forecast to increase to 16% of our total government revenue. This is more than three times our current debt servicing costs and with our current reduced economy, debt servicing will demand a significant chunk of our revenue. This will severely impact our capacity to invest in, let alone maintain our infrastructure, and will be a dampener to our attempts to fast track economic growth. We and our Pacific neighbors need debt financing on realistic terms to stimulate our economies and fast track our recovery. And we need to work with the bank to restructure existing debt. Grants and access to concessional financing will be critical for the Pacific. Debt financing just adds burden to some of our smallest economies in the world. Our focus should be on increasing productivity and regrowing the economy. This means we cannot afford to have 30% of our generated revenue being consumed by debt servicing. Every measure to restructure debt to better accommodate debt servicing needs to be considered as we climb back and participate in the global economy. Our status as a microeconomy places my country at an extreme level of economic exposure to natural disasters, which are increasing in intensity and frequency as the climate changes. Each year, every season, in the Pacific, someone gets hit. This season, it was New Zealand and Vanuatu that were hit most recently with devastating cyclones, causing immense damage. Climate financing for adaptation purposes is vital for our countries, those that are on the front lines of climate change. 
We are no longer fighting just for our existence, we are fighting for our survival. We are paying for the global effects wrought by the excesses of others. Now we are required to borrow money to build resilience. That is like demanding money for protection. The absurdity of this concept is only superseded by the climate tragedy that continues to damage us. I applaud the bank in outlining its climate strategies moving forward. Let us ensure that access to financing to address the many challenges, including the climate emergency we face, are equitable, and they give us a fair go at making meaningful interventions within our communities. Uh, Mr. President, we look forward to our continued partnership with ADB as we build back our economies. Thank you. Thank the Governor, Prime Minister of Cook Island. I now call on the Governor for Kyrgyz Republic. It may be the last year. Yeah. Good day, everyone. Uh, honestly, I am very glad to be here, uh, especially uh, to talk with you face to face. Dear members of the board, dear the President Asakawa, dear ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to ADB's annual meeting. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the Korean government for hospitality and also let me thank the ADB for assistance and support for, for the ongoing social economic reforms for being a reliable partner. ADB is one of the key partners providing significant support to the Kyrgyz Republic in priority sectors of the economy and especially in the fight against the consequences of COVID-19. Dear participants, today we are witnessing those military conflicts, a humanitarian crisis and the consequences of the epidemiological disease seriously impaired the even development of the countries and peoples, negatively affect global financial process and lead to political and economic sanctions. All these problems seriously affect the vital interests of the entire population in the world and require a consistent solution, which is possible only through joint efforts. Under this condition, in our opinion, we must actively interact with each other in order to maintain the sustainability of the development of our national economies, the stability of the banking and financial sector of our countries and also adequately respond in case of crisis situation. In this regard, the Korean Republic calls on the member of countries of the Asian Development Bank and uh, partners to develop a systematic approach to solving current problems and stands for joint action in this direction. An equally urgent issue in the modern world is the problem of climate change, environmental protection and food security. For its part, uh, as, as the Glasgow summit, the Kyrgyz Republic pledged to significantly reduce its industrial and hydrocarbon emissions into the atmosphere. In this context, our country are having significant hydropower resources, intends to implement a number of large-scale water and energy projects for the construction of hydroelectric power stations. In parallel, we are preparing for the implementation of projects on the use of solar energy for the production of electricity and heat. We hope that during the implementation of these tasks, we will be receiving comprehensive assistance and support from our partners. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we believe it is uh, fundamentally important to f familiarize you with your implementation of national reforms. Thus, the government will develop national projects in three directions. New, first, uh, this is new energy strategy. Initiates the national program Energy of the Country Reset and announces the forthcoming five-year period as a five-year development of the country's energy sector. Second, new financial strategy of the country. The new strategy will form the basis of the national program Kyrgyzstan a regional oasis for business within the framework of which is attractive investment climate will be created in the country. 
in the medium term is planned uh, to increase the volume of investment to 15% of GDP. Third, strategy for technological modernization of the country. The technological revolution program will be initiated. Kyrgyzstan must become fully open to attack technology and innov innovation from outside. In conclusion, I take this opportunity to convey uh, my gratitude to the ADB uh, for the support of reforms which is manifested in improving the livelihoods in citizens of the Kyrgyz Republic. And uh, let me also express hope for further fruitful cooperation uh, to achieve great success on the above programs. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank the governor for the Kyrgyz Republic. Any governors for more discussion? No. I would like to thank the governors for their remarks. All remarks will be included in the summary of proceedings that will be prepared by the Secretariat. Before we close this session, I'd like to call on the Secretary. Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, please allow us to proceed to a brief ceremony. It has been our tradition to pass on the baton from the Chair to Chair-elect. May I request the Chair, the Governor, for the Republic of Korea, the Chair-elect, the Governor for Georgia, and the ADP President to come forward for the baton passing and a photo. Thank you. I now call on the governor for Georgia, uh, the chair-elect of the board of governors. Here at the floor. Thank you, Your Excellency Governor Cho, Your Excellency President Asakawa. Let me express how delighted and honored we are for taking the chairmanship for the 57th annual meeting and hosting you in Tbilisi in Georgia. Let me congratulate Governor Cho for a very successful 56th ADB annual meeting. And from, from the heart, thanks the Korean people for the great hospitality. So we are looking forward to seeing you and your colleagues in Georgia, in Tbilisi. I know that some of you will have quite long flight and I promise to comp compensate it with the Georgian hospitality. So meanwhile, so let me remind you about that uh, as a future host country event will take place in this ballroom tomorrow at 5.15 and so we are, will be very pleased 
to uh, host you and to share with you the piece of our culture, ref refreshments, and of course, Georgian wine. Thank you very much. Thank to Governor for Georgia for his message. It's time to conclude the business sessions. I'd like to thank all ADB staff, including Mr. Secretary, for preparing for his, these business sessions. Thank you all the governors for taking the time to come to Korea for these annual meetings. It's the uh, best time for the year, and the weather is just right for visiting and ex experiencing Korea. I hope you all enjoy Korea during your stay here. Fellow governors, ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare this meeting concluded.